young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Check, check, one, two. Welcome, everyone, back to this week's installment of the Justin Moore Podcast. Good to be back with you guys and gals out there in podcast land. This is your old buddy, your old pal, J.R. the Handler, coming to you from Alabama, way down here deep in Dixie. And uh, on the other end is the namesake of this podcast, your favorite singing Razorback, favorite morning show host, the greatest dad in all of Grant County, by God. <laughs> I don't know about Softball that. coaching phenomenon himself. Justin Moore, what's up, JM? What's going on in Arkansas today? Man, um, what else is new? Alabama's kicking Arkansas's ass in baseball right now uh, in the (laughs) SEC tournament as we speak. I'm like, good Lord, man. I don't think y'all beat us in years at baseball. We cannot beat y'all jokers now. <laughs> like, you told crazy. me the other day on the bus, you said, we watched a little of the game early and I went and did something yeah. to come back. You said, yeah, y'all ended up beating us. I was like, wow, I didn't see that coming. 18 y'all are really to good. 5. You said 18 to 5. Like, <laughs> good Lord, where's that good been Lord. all year? Because we're like a 500 yeah. team. I mean, we're young. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, y'all have got a, a – your coach is not brand new, but he's not been there a long, long time. Right. And he's going to be good, I think. And has improved y'all, but I mean, he's you know, good against Arkansas, five, apparently. Well, I mean, we've been top five in the country all season, and y'all have just beat us into oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching now; it's it's uh, it's. T- I mean, it's only two nothing in the top of the third, but I'm just like, guys, can we not ever beat them anymore? Can like, we beat Alabama? Good Lord, please! Oh my gosh! Uh, but baseball's weird, man. It's oh uh, yeah. You know, Streaky. it's just one. Yes, yeah, and we're playing. We're just not playing good ball right now, and we're not pitching well. We're not hitting well. I mean, I'm talking weeks now, yeah. not just uh, these games. But um, I don't so know. you either got you either got two options there. Either you're going to get it all out now and then get on a run hot when it really really matters. But it's kind of like it's not a good time to not be rocking. Right. This is kind of time no. when you want to start rolling right here. Yeah, this would be about the time. You know, like you know. Take basketball, for example, when, you know, when you start the postseason, uh, that is, uh, that's not when you want to slump. That's when you right. want to be Get to rolling, clicking on yeah. all cylinders. Right. Like, we just well, got, we just had y'all in a rundown, for example. Okay, my 12 you girls can do a rundown, right? Yeah. You know, and nine times out of ten, they get, they get the, the out. Your your guy advanced. Uh, the worst thing that can happen on a rundown is they advance to the next base. Right. It, w- the wor- the worst that should happen is they, they get, get back. they get back safely to the base they came from. Right. Y'all just advanced from second to third on a rundown <laughs> with college players. I'm like, what? I mean, it's just silliness. I, I, <laughs> but well, you know, I di- said, I, maybe, hey, I, I maybe digress. we will get hot. I mean, it'd take a miracle to get, yeah. you know, but hey, you never yeah, know. Yeah, y'all would have to win the SEC tournament to get in probably, but you never know in baseball, man. You, you I just, remember years you, you and years run the ago. Table. I don't, yeah, I remember years and years ago, my best buddy uh, growing up, Eason, when, I think we were in college or right when we got out. Um, it was either the Diamondbacks or the Marlins or somebody who was an expansion team kind of came out of nowhere, got hot with a bunch of – I mean, it wasn't a very expensive roster, the whole mm-hmm. thing, and won the – and he said, man, in baseball, if you just got to be hot at the right time, that's more important than being good and more than any other sport. You know, I remember – you know, it might have been back-to-back years. I don't know that, but – um you're exactly right. The Diamondbacks, you know me. I mean, so I'm sorry out there for those listening who are not baseball fans. I'm a baseball nerd. This is baseball time of year, okay? So let me nerd out a little bit. But I think it was like late 90s, early 2000s when you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and the Diamondbacks won one when they weren't – I mean, they were good, but they weren't great. They came and out the Marlins of also. They Marlins the, also did yeah. that. They did it – I mean, it was – it was two out of maybe four years or something. They, right. they were really close in those years. I think um, I think the Marlins, they're, I think if I'm not mistaken, when they won one, 
golly, who was a rookie? They had a really big time rookie that's become a oh M- yeah. Miguel Cabrera. Right. I, if I'm not mistaken, and they might have had one or two uh, veterans be wrong, that, that everybody wrote off as they were done, and a bunch yeah. of no names. And they and up, then I, maybe even like not Fred McGriff, but some some older like guys that were that their last right. Moises Salou, some somebody like their last couple right. of years, and they had a couple good years left, and that was. But they had like a thirty million dollar roster, and whoever they were playing, the Yankees had like a hundred and fifty million or something crazy at the time. Yeah, and uh, and then the Diamondbacks was kind of the same way. I remember like they had. I remember the guy who got the winning hit to score the winning run was. Uh, uh, Craig Council. Uh, I don't yep. know why I remember, remember that, that name. name. Yeah, but he had was, a weird bat and he yep. held his bat like straight up or something. Was Randy but, Johnson? Wasn't that older, straight hair, short haircut? I, Randy Johnson, the big unit. I think I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's right. Big back, and, still mustache, but uh, no mullet. Yeah, that was around the. Yeah, I think that's I think that's right. So, but uh, but yeah, yeah random, point being, yeah, um, to your point, like you just got to get hot, man, and. Now, we're going the opposite direction right now. So, but you never know, man. It could be one hit, one play in the field, whatever that just kind of flips the script for the whole team. And hopefully, we can yeah. do it before, you know, next week's start of. Uh, I mean, the SEC tournament don't really matter. I mean, because you kind of want to rest your arms anyway. Right. So it's kind of better to. It sounds terrible, but it's almost better to lose and come back and rest up. But, mm-hmm. but um. You know, nobody likes to admit – or nobody likes to lose. Right. You know, and nobody's throwing games, that's right. for sure. But um, but uh, they got to get right before next week because they, they, they may be uh, calling, it, calling it a season if they don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's that time, yeah. no doubt. Well, man, well, we I hate everybody out there. I hate we missed last week. We've just been busy as crap getting back out on the road, but we're going to dial it all in and make sure to keep getting these out each and every week. We've got some guests uh, coming up over the next month or so. We've got all kinds of new news and stuff we're going to drop, so y'all make sure to go uh, follow on Instagram page, uh, the Justin Moore Podcast, uh, and go tell your friends about it, and remember to uh, like, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff every time you interact with it. Um, but this week we thought we – I've got a bunch of uh, – you know, mail and fan uh, inquiries and suggestions and comments and uh, stuff. So I figured we'd go through some of that. Uh, yeah, we and also I was sick last week. It was really the, uh, um, another main reason. We, I yeah. sound sick right now. I'm not. I feel perfectly fine. I'm just hoarse. Um, you know, and you were asking me before we came on, why are you hoarse? You know, I was thinking about it. <laughs> Think about it. Uh, We've played three shows a weekend, what, a month straight? And that's the first time we've done that it, yeah. all year. So, right. I mean, it could be some of that, too. I don't I don't know. But uh, last week I, I had a stomach bug uh, that was absolutely miserable. Kind of ran through four of the six of us here. I won't go into details. You can – you can draw yeah, your own. I've heard and I've heard random different people saying that they've uh, had similar kind of stuff after y'all that kind of thing. Grice, I think his whole family them just we had dinner with them last night. And was, I think they said it, it was miserable. It had got them mm. too. Yeah, it's um uh, it's so, wild. But we're so back. That was another so reason we weren't with you, but, yeah. but we're glad to be back this week. And and on the road, so we're gonna talk about some of being on the road. I mean, we had a blast out there with Granger Smith um the last yeah. couple of weeks. Man, those guys are great. Um last week and he came on some shows with us. Um since then is uh the gorilla man scott stevens that joker's <laughs> wild ain't he y'all i, I got oh, some, i got a bunch of comments from you guys so um we'll make sure to to drop those but it's good catching up with him and um uh seeing him out on the road with his guys and and stuff and um and heath and you know had a good time on the road last couple of weeks been got home for a few days yeah. got to heal it up and then uh get right back out there has it been storming at your house it's been raining here it only didn't hasn't rained since i've been home for about four hours and i cut the grass yesterday in the in the rain during that it has it's now sunny that's why i have the blinds pulled back here because uh i figured it would be blinding you but uh, but it's the first time i feel like i've seen the sun since i got home yeah it's been just miserably rainy and mild temperatures so that's not a bad thing but no i've been i've for the last couple of weeks now i've needed to get out and and bush hog uh, our pasture and it's been so wet i can't i mean you know how wet it stays around here i've done what yeah. is dry enough yeah but i got out there uh, i got out everywhere there else is wet man 
I know. So. Well, that's why it, we had 85% chance of rain yesterday, but it, I woke up and it had quit raining. It was starting to dry out. And it got sunny and got hot. And I realized um, about, you know, 2 o'clock, I said, man, if it's this is probably good as it's going to get all week. I said, I got to just try now. Even if I make ruts in the yard, I don't care. Yeah. So um, I got there on the riding lawnmower, made about two passes. Something's wrong with it now. Couldn't get the blade to engage. Check the bell. Everything looks fine. So parked it, getting the push mower out. Mind you, <laughs> at, I, we didn't have the cast, but I got an MRI. I got two more herniated discs. So I'm out there, four blown discs, pushing the push mower in the wet rain. Yeah, and it ain't like your yard's little. No, I mean, it's, I mean, it's it not huge. like a little tiny little. Yeah, it's half acre. And, you know, it's it, not really it got, a push mower. Job. No, it, I mean, it, really, it, and, I mean. It, and it was and it was thick and wet and and so anyway, but I had to and it was hot, it was ninety degrees, but um, I got it knocked out just in time and then it sprinkled a little and then uh, we had dinner with the Grices uh, at the Sloop and nice. then uh, we had some friends come in town from Louisiana. They're down here fishing and doing stuff, so I got a nice bass boat in my nice. yard right now. If I wanted to go put it in the water somewhere, I don't I didn't go tell ahead, Wade that, go. but I said, well, I'm gonna be here for another day. You never know. But anyway, so I got caught up with that, man. And then I'm I'm gonna pack, and then we're back on the road tomorrow. Yeah, and the other thing for for us, man. I mean, again, so where I live, for for those out there listening that haven't heard us discuss it before, it's it's river bottoms. I mean, it's the the it's wet. It stays wet. It's like a miniature little swamp or something, or um, I call it like a miniature New Orleans. So you go five miles in any direction from my house, and it's more like rolling hills. But my town, where I'm from, is like a little bowl. Yep. Like New Orleans, it's weird, man. It's just unfortunate, quite honestly. But our root systems, you know, I have a lot of mature timber. Um, on my property uh and the root systems just won't hold when we have these storms dude i i'm gonna take a picture and show you how big this tree is it's down in my pasture right now i mean it's enormous like it would have killed if we'd have been riding a four-wheeler by it or something and it falls or if even in my tractor it would have killed it killed one of us it's just enormous oh my god probably 80 year old tree or something you know it would yeah, take it, me, Jr., a week with the chainsaw to to get it moved, and it's been so rainy and nasty, I ain't even be able to start on it. So it's anyway, it's a mess. But uh, we got a lot of trees down. So, yeah, that's that's kind of like we. I, I was watching the radar, <laughs> man, and it, we got kind of lucky compared to everywhere else because it looked like it was just rocking everywhere, um, everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, so hopefully everybody's so. safe with all that stuff going on. And uh, I guess if you want to, we go ahead and get to some of these um, questions, comments, different things I had saved. I've been just taking pictures of it on my phone, so it's going to be a little clunky, but there, I, it's too many places to find stuff, and I, I'm trying to do it myself while we're traveling. So I uh, did see this today. As of uh, today, when we <laughs> record this, uh, two years ago, we put out the first episode of the Justin Moore podcast on May 25th. Oh, of wow. 2020. So two years of podcast. Of today? Two today. years ago today? Yep. Wow. <clears throat> um, get back to that one and that one. That's uh, pretty one. Uh, That's pretty wild. Yeah, I know. Here's a recent one um, uh, from L.A. Redfeather, one of our longtime listeners. Appreciate you. Uh, she said, if you do QA, here's mine. What are the four books on JM's desk? One looks like something about Arkansas, and what uh, books do you dip – into on and off the road happy memorial day uh to the, you and the crew and be safe that's a good question that's a good question i i, I <laughs> and i know someone else has I, someone else has asked that before too um, so I'm, i'll see if i can find out who that was give them a I, shout out i love to read um but i don't do it as often as i would like to because the kids quite honestly and i just can't turn my brain like i feel like if i'm reading um I, I want that to be the only thing I'm focused on. And I get – those opportunities are really rare. Um, but what I have here is uh, a couple of podcast guests, uh, Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights. Good one. Um, Diamond Dallas Page, uh, Positively Page. Uh, <clears throat> the Meat Eater, a fish and game cookbook. And quite honestly, these last two were just placed here to look good. Uh, the meat eater is that the um, is that from uh, Stephen? Whatever Rinella? my wife bought and put here. Uh, That's probably the Stephen Ranella guy. Meat eater yeah. podcast. 
yeah, that dude, that dude, they got a TV show and everything. I love that guy. He's a, he's a man. We, See, I, I need to look at that. To I just, it was just a piece to look good here, uh, according to my wife. And yeah. then uh, the other Arkansas one is uh, Fishes of Arkansas. Fishes of Arkansas. There you go. Which I don't yeah. know. Is Fishes the way you say that? Or is, would it not be plural. Fish? I thought yeah, so. That's what, could just be because our redneck southern I don't slang, know. We Maybe. Say fishes. I, I don't know. Um, so that's what's here. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I have a ton of other. Books and I was gonna say, I, and you rotate because we get them on the road. I know, um, <clears throat> I know. Chad Belding gave you another cookbook last time we saw him. Mm -hmm. You just got one from um, Cody Allen when we saw him. So they'll all rotate. Yeah, yeah. We need to get Cody on to talk about that. He he uh, he wrote a book. Yeah. I'm not even quite sure. I haven't started it, so I'm not sure if it's like a life, like a biography, or mm -hmm. uh, or or what it, what exactly it is. But um, good guy. Yeah, I'm behind like you. I have been through spells when I was doing fairly well on my reading, and then basically I guess I blame it on COVID, the pandemic or whatever. I really hadn't got back on the train since then, even though I've gotten a few I've wanted to. I bought a couple uh, Hemingway books before I went to Key West and read half of one. I look through my Charlie Daniels book still every week. Newest one I got, um, I got the uh, – Yeah, you do a much better job of reading than I do, though. You, you read a lot. Uh, well, it's a lot more just, than I do. Yeah, but it's all stuff like this. Like this one's a Phil Jackson's Eleven Rings book. I hadn't started yet, but that's next on the list. But most of my stuff is just rock docs, basically. Same thing I watch on yeah. YouTube videos. It's, you know, a book on Willie Nelson or a, uh, yeah. you know, uh, just stuff like that. To, to be honest, my favorite John, books. Yeah, you know, my, my things like that. My favorite books, um, I think that was L.A. Red Feather that asked that, but um, yep. our history. Uh, like, I, I like reading about, you know, whether it be different wars or, or generals or, um, you know, uh, presidents or, yeah. yeah, just things that really happen. That, those are the ones that intrigue me the most. And then I feel like it's making me a, a, t a touch smarter. I'm, I'm, I'm not very bright, but. I feel like it helps me a little bit and, and be able to, I guess, handle different conversations, which you do a really good job of that. I watch nonsense, uh, yeah. like silly comedy movies and stuff. Like I just, we were talking, I think it was maybe the last podcast we did, or it could have been the radio show. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so scatterbrained about just re-watching Caddyshack, which is just so ridiculous and yeah. hilarious. But, still we, still uh, holds up. Yeah, he's a great movie, but that's the kind of stuff I do, whereas J.R., you and I talked about this yeah. on the road the other day. J.R. does a much – he's much more productive with, with his uh, viewership. Like, he watches – like I'll go watch Caddyshack, and J.R. will go watch some documentary about um, – I don't know. Give an example. The just some crazy right, something. Just some the one crazy I'm watching something. Right now that, is on, uh, you always Mile depress Island. me when you start talking about it. You're, you're like, man, this is horrible. Listen to this. I, it's almost like, hey, this stinks. Smell it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, <laughs> but, yeah, but, you, it, uh, but you're a lot more knowledgeable than I am right. because of it. Well, like the one I just watched, we were talking about. I was telling you and Dave about bass player Dave is um, meltdown the Three Mile Island incident um, from the late from 1979. It was right before I was born. The Three Mile Island was our big nuclear uh issue we had here in pennsylvania and i kind of knew a little bit you know i'd heard the term and stuff so but it just stuff like that especially if it's in short uh, episodes documentary form or like a movie or something yeah that's mostly what i want especially if it's in entertainment because i don't play and sing so i feel like being a historian of music <clears throat> is kind of one of my strong suits so i always but that stuff yeah. that's what it, that's what inter in, intrigues me if i watch a, a horror movie or something yeah. like my brother loves like horror, like B horror movie. I watch them and it's just it doesn't do anything. Oh, see, I don't like horror movies, but I can right. watch just about anything else. Or a lot of stuff. It's to me, it's just like, um, you know, like you said, a lot of times I'll dissect like that. Could that's not really if it's supposed to be funny, I get it. But sometimes I'm like, <sighs> this is stupid. Well, even know? like like shows we you know both of us watch. Yeah, like we even watch them differently. Like I just watch them. I'm entertained by them. You know Ozark, for example, yeah. or whatever. Right, and you'll go. Just finish well, that, that by the way. That can't happen that way, or that didn't happen that way. Yeah, so the heroin, the heroin kingpin okay. lady's not just gonna have a, a big old sprawling property in a big house unaccompanied by any goons at any yeah. time with machine guns. Not happening. Not happening. So I, I like calling out that kind of stuff, and just you know, uh, I guess you'd call. I'm not gonna 
too many spoiler alerts, but spoiler alert here too. If 50 people die in a county in machine gun fire in one month, there's going to be more cops there than just right. one FBI person trying to keep it on hush us. Let's just be honest here. The news, the helicopters, you can't cover up as much as these. See, I just want to bury my, I just want to bury my head in the sand and pretend like it's all real. <laughs> It's a I'm different just, story. Me, like I know. I was talking. I'm just to a watching my neighbors to see if I see any tendencies to make sure it's real and just kind of, you know. I, we were talking. I was talking to uh, uh, a buddy of mine who uh, you know well, um, but and he'll he's probably listening, so he'll know it's I'm talking about him. But I don't remember if it was 1883 or Yellowstone, but he runs a lot of cows, uh, yeah. works a lot of cows, and he's like. They went and they did this and did that and did this. Something about a cow that uh, hung up in a fence or something. He's like, you wouldn't have done that. They wouldn't have done that. They would have done this or that. And I'm like, man, y'all y'all are hardcore about making sure it's, it's super accurate. I, mean, I don't even remember that part. Well, why would you not? You know, I don't even remember that part of that just show. Make it, why would you just make it right? In the casino. I, uh, the casino yeah. in, in Ozark. Never would you have a casino that tiny. Not, no, yeah, no it's, way too it's too little. It's too little for you. No way. <laughs> that, that would never. This never would happen. They did that for music movies, so it could be in a set. It was easier that way. Oh man. Uh, I so just feel, funny. and you know what? I think one of them that started would be. I remember when they made the first Incredible Hulk movie, uh-huh. like in modern times, and they had the guy, and he morphed into this like CGI, like computer Incredible Hulk, and I remember thinking, yeah. All right, back in the day, Lou Ferrigno was the Hulk when he transformed from right. David Banner. To, uh, and I'm thinking, Lou Ferrigno looked like the Incredible Hulk close enough they could do stuff. They got people bigger than Lou now. They got these monster the six size of nine, like a 400-pound bodybuilders, not just big dude, but bo- that look like the real. Mm. Just paint him green and make him the Hulk. Why we got to have a computer? Yeah. It's more realistic to me within the fake stuff sometimes. Yeah, like well, the, I mean, that, that I do stuff. agree with. That I do agree with. So I, I think I had mentioned on here, I know I've mentioned it to you, that we're watching, we started at the very beginning, and I forget what the first one was, but it may have been Thor or something. I don't know. But, the, but we're we're watching the um, all the Marvel movies in, like, cinematic right. timeline the order. They came not, out. Not, well, no, not when they came out. What makes sense oh, as I far gotcha. as... Um, you know what events happened i you know yeah. that make the most sense i don't know how else to articulate that better but because i'm doing a poor job of it but i think everybody understands my point so <clears throat> we watched um we're up to last night we watched um the avengers age of ultron which i think is the second avengers and i told kate i'm like and it was the Hulk. Um, I'm like, God, this looks ridiculously cheeseball and not real yeah. at all. It was some yeah. fight scene. I'm like, everything looks ridiculous. And and usually they do a great job with that. But I will agree with you on Hulk. It's just like, man, it's over the top. Like, just get a, the guy who looks like Thor like the looks size, like Thor. He literally is the size of a building. Like a, yeah, he's not that. That's not. That's not real. Don't yeah. need that. Don't even for the movies. So. Don't need. And I know watching Disney, some Disney stuff lately. Um, you, I watched some of the newer stuff that's computer, and then I went back and watched <laughs> like Three Caballeros and um, like uh, some classic, classic like Disney, old like school jungle, stuff. Jungle yeah. Book. And I watched. I watched Fantasia the other day, and I, that still holds up. What a great, trippy, yeah. awesome movie that was for the forties. That's where he's a wizard, right? Yeah, when Mickey, uh, Mickey? The, the, he, yeah. he gets he talks he gets the magic to make the broom start bringing the water. Then he keep bringing water. It's kind of like don't be careful what right. you wish for. But it's set right. to all this really like mm-hmm. high end classical music with an orchestra playing it. Yeah, but vis- it's but it looks so much better to me than the computer stuff, which you can do more with the computer. And this, but it that just doesn't for me. It just doesn't work. The cartoons just look better. Like even watching like the the modern you know Marvel cartoons compared to like. Spider-Man and stuff from like the '90s and X-Men from the '90s, it just looked better to me. And I still, I, yeah, I just think we, the CGI's you and I got a to, lot of good stuff, like with car scenes and different things like that, I, and sp- planes and fighting better. But when it comes to, you know, I just think that's different. Well, you, you and I did even discuss that in terms of uh, like old school cartoons recently. Like, like I'm trying to get south to watch like. Uh, 
I don't know, Bugs, uh, Bugs Bunny, Bugs Bunny or, or yeah. what, you know, or whatever, or Popeye. I loved Popeye growing up. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. I, I think they did it. Some of it's over the top is the point. And they'd rather watch like, um, you know, these CGI monster trucks drive down a cliff and jump off and just fall into oblivion and stuff. Just ridiculous right. stuff. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I saw Aiden watching last time. I'm like, what is this? But anyway, there's our but, movie stuff. And, yeah, I, I did yeah. finish Ozark. Um, and it was I was a great uh, series. I thought it was good. <laughs> yeah, we got a handful left. Uh, and I, we might get to watch tonight. So, see, we can't watch it when the kids are here. But right. Three of the kids are staying the night with a friend. Uh, but um, <clears throat> so maybe we can watch – some of that tonight but you know but yeah. like the marvel stuff the one thing i will say about that is like we we can at least watch that with the kids right like they're they're you know nothing and it's ridiculous. adult enough to not be too kiddie yeah but yeah not over yeah. enough for them nothing offensive for them to be shocked and be yeah. like yeah in south he can man he'll go oh that's captain marvel or that's so and so or that's black widow and we're like i didn't even know that's who that was okay Mm-hmm. And, and he's right. I mean, we look it right. up. We're like, yeah, he he knows. So, um, but man, we're, yeah, we're um, we probably got maybe seven or eight left. I think there's like twenty five, twenty eight, thirty, something like that total now. But uh, yeah, but we 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 have watched through Ant Man. We watched Ant Man last night, which is a little silly, but. It was good. really good, actually. Yeah, and yeah. in Ant Man, in Ant Man in the cartoons was kind of, <clears throat> or in the uh, comics, he was kind of silly like that. Yeah, it was kind of so, fun. Uh, yeah, those are great. But so, um, anyway, I threw us off track there with the questions. No, but no, I love it. Um, let's get on down the list here. I got one here from Patrick Dory, Dowry. Excuse me, Patrick Dowry, the real Pat D on Insta says, uh, "Jr. Found the Just More <laughs> podcast a few weeks ago because of this post, and haven't been able to stop listening since." Uh, awesome. It's become a bit of a problem, LOL. Can honestly say <laughs> the few short weeks I've listened, it's made me a better father and Christian. Keep keep on keeping on, boys, and roll them easy. Oh, love wow, what y'all are man. doing. Much love, brothers. That's awesome. And he put a picture up of the McConaughey episode, so I guess he that he found that somewhere along the line. Well, thanks for That's listening, awesome. Patrick. Yeah, man. Very cool. I, I can't believe we, we're, we're good influences on anybody, but that's great to hear. Probably random, our guests. Yeah, a couple <laughs> not, random not, pictures. Not you and me. <laughs> yeah, right. A couple random pictures here. Here's, I got, here's one of me of you and Granger. I, me and Chris were supposed to get one that night. We never did. Then I got one of Todd and their drummer, t- drummer uh, Granger's drummer, puking outside the bus while Todd's hanging out the window, <clears throat> um, giving him the thumbs up. Oh, my God. Oh, oh gosh. God. That's great. That should be their next all-access pass. That's what I told him. And then That's great. Um, Got one of you and Travis Campbell. It's good to see him and his wife in. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wich- yeah. Uh, Wichita. Glenn's son. Yeah, yep. that, he's yeah, a trip, sure. man. What a nice, sweet, just kind sweet guy. People. Yeah. And man, his stories like he he ran into Steph, uh, our guitar player who's French Canadian, and Steph. Me and Steph do our the few the three French words I know back and forth to each other. Right. And Travis jumps in and blah, 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 blah. he went to school in <laughs> Switzerland for a while and well you know you know we should get Travis on here he would yeah. be interesting I think people would be interested to hear um, he told the story while on the, our radio show and I I don't know if I told you or I didn't but um, how he met his wife she she was an artist or is an artist and had been praying to meet somebody who i think played drums she wanted somebody who was like it was very specific and it was all like him like wanted somebody to be like bilingual uh wanted somebody and he's like well that's crazy because i i speak french i play drums (laughs) right they're sitting together on a yeah they're sitting next to each other on a flight He's like, and you're a lady, and you're pretty. So, uh, uh, yes, ma- uh, hello, my lady. Hello, um, lady. I play the drums. <laughs> anyway, and it was a, it was a neat story, and I'm butchering it, but yeah. um, but people, we should get the, get him on because, um, I mean, who's not a Glenn Campbell fan? First of all, and, right? And uh, he's got obviously great stories about his dad, and yeah. Uh, but uh, he- he's got a pretty neat story himself. Yeah. He and his wife uh, alone, you know. I asked him, did he? Did they want to go to front of house and you know see the lights and you know hear the show a little better? He said, no, he likes the side stage because I'd always remind him going to shows with his dad. I was like, wow. Like yeah, that. he said that. He said that on the radio um, when we had him on. He, he said, man, uh, the first time he had come to a show, which now's been I don't know four or five, five years, years ago. ago yeah. yeah. 
Um, and he, it was pretty neat to hear. He's like, man, yeah. He goes, I, I kind of got emotional watching side stage because, you know, remind him of his dad, like, mm-hmm. like you just, like yep. you just mentioned. Um, it's wild. So. I'm sure it would be pretty emotional when you think yeah. about it, you know, especially yeah. if you don't have your parents any for, any longer, you know. Well, it'd be like um, thinking about, yeah, back when you're like this earliest memory, four or five years old, and you can right. remember being standing over there with your family or whoever. Yeah, you like know? I remember my mom and dad, um, I'm looking out their house right now, but I, I remember I was like three when they built that house, three or four. And I remember my grandpa giving me a hammer and putting – uh, nails in a two by four you know they were down far enough i couldn't get them out and me yeah. just while he's literally building the house wow i'm just sitting on the ground hammering these nails on but i don't know remember. if that's the safest practice yeah. for a three or four year old but I, um better than an ipad yeah it, and i that's like one of my earliest memories is wow. just watching my grandpa and trying to do everything which i know you yeah. kind of have the same relationship with yours and yeah like just trying to emulate everything he was doing mm-hmm. you know um that's so, awesome you remember that i never heard that yeah pretty wild. um yeah that same night we got to see travis we got to do something also very cool with uh, our buddy lucas hogue mm-hmm. who was on that show with us shout out to lucas who's a podcast oh, yeah. guest and um a good buddy of ours he did a few shows with us this past week and with uh, along with batteries plus and folds of honor um they gave a scholarship to a young man whose father had served in the air force and what a stand-up young guy! I actually I'm gave him my impressive number. Impressive young young man. Yeah, he wants, sure. he's going to go to school uh, up there in Can uh, a smaller school in Kansas. Uh, he wants to go into journalism, um, entertainment yeah. stuff. So um, was was sharp young guy. And his dad, I mean, what a, a veteran and just a, a yeah. true American patriot. So I want to shout out to them. That was awesome. And thanks to Batteries Plus and Folds of Honor for all that they do to to. Uh, to do that stuff for these families, what eighty something families they've done this for? I think he said in the past. Five I think years. that's I think that's what he said. And, um, and just to just to uh, piggyback on what you said, man, he was a super impressive young kid and uh, plays college football at yep. this school. I forget where it was, and um, I think he said he had a four point his first year, um, which is ridiculous in itself yeah. to to be to be an athlete and do that on top yeah. of it I've, i mean hell i went to college for two weeks and that, yeah. that was more than i could handle and i didn't play a sport or anything so yeah um i know his mom and dad have to be super proud of him and and like you said pretty neat uh little project that uh they do i think they gave him was it 10 grand 10 grand yeah to go to war to schooling so um pretty neat to be a part of that like you said absolutely and uh, I got a little treat this weekend. I'm just going through my f- pictures here, remembering stuff I want to talk about. I got a little treat this week. I um, I flew into Wichita the day before to uh, before the show to get there because I'm flying solo from down here. Oh, People yeah, I forgot about bus. that. Yeah. And uh, on my way there, I'm scrolling through, and I see Robert Earl Keane puts on Instagram where he's playing at the Orpheum Theater in Wichita. And I was like, huh, it can't be tonight. And I look, and I said, oh, it is. Let me see where this place is. It was 0.4 miles from the hotel I was staying at. So I walked down there and got me a balcony seat, and I watched – Robert Earl Keane and his I'm Coming Home farewell tour, uh, 41 years on the road. So uh, it was a good show. Um, Keane's hanging it up in uh, September, I believe. So if you see him come through your town, go check oh, him wow. out. Oh, wow, really? I, I don't remember you saying that. Yeah, that's the end. He's going to do like, kind of like wow. a Don Williams thing, just retire from all public performances. I can tell his – I think he's got <clears> he, – his back look, I'm sure, all them years, 41 years on the road, you know. Um, but it was a great show. He told all the good stories, and um, his band was really good. I met his people. It was it was really cool. So that was awesome. Wow. Um, let's see which one we got here. Oh, I want to give a shout out um, to uh, the inductees to the uh, Hall of Fame this year: uh, Joe Galani, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Mr. Keith Whitley. Like Joe three. Galani was Joe Galani was the first person to uh, turn me down for a record deal. <laughs> yep. Still got the, we still got the note. Him and Renee RCA, Bell, wasn't it? Yeah, at RCA at the time. And, man, it, it looked good. I was like – I think I was 18 or 19. I was yeah. young, man, green. And he should have turned me down. But, you know, you, you go through the whole deal. And, and I I went and played for him at the label. And then they came uh, – uh, and and we did a showcase and the whole thing. We did it down uh, – I don't remember if it was a second fiddle or the stage or something like, yeah. you know, down on Broadway. And uh, 
Golly, it, it seems like a, a lifetime ago, but I mean, all my folks from from Arkansas drove up to Nashville, and it was uh, it was you know it was like the biggest event of my life, you know, oh, which yeah. it was at the Showcase, time. Showcase, absolutely. But um, and I'm I, I probably am not explaining this well to people. So basically, if a record label is interested in you enough to want to hear you play live, you'll set up this show, and it's called a showcase, and usually pick a pick a, a venue. You know, at that time, I don't know how they do it now, but at, at that time, we picked a venue down on Broadway, which is the where all the honky-tonks are in, in Nashville, and and then they had me back in after it, and we're, you know, I've got uh, Keith Stegall publishing me at the time. He's like, it feels really good. They're going to give us a deal, and no, <laughs> just wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Yeah. Wah. and we're um, and he, I just remember at the time going, man, I've got Stegall on my side, and I had my you know this lined up and this lined up, and it was at the time RCA was the biggest label group yeah in town. It was Arista, uh, RCA, maybe Columbia. But, I mean, they had pretty much every big – I mean, Brad Paisley was huge at the time. He's still huge, but he was huge. Yeah. Alan Jackson was rocking. We're talking 02, 03. Um, and uh, just – just they were they were the thing. Yeah. And I yeah, thought, oh, yeah. man, I, I, I'm, that, was, that was my one shot. I, yep. I, I thought, you yep. know, at the time – of course, I was not – I think I was 19, but you're going – it's over. I, right. I gave it my best shot. I had all this firepower behind me. It went so well. Conversations went so well, and then they just shut off. And yep. nope, not we're gonna pass. And I'm like, we did all that, and you're gonna pass? Yeah. And so, yeah, but a, things get your, get your band bigger, rehearse. Yeah. I mean, get yeah. you bring in production. I mean, I mean all that stuff. <laughs> but things. <clears throat> Yeah, and at the time, Jr. I didn't even have a band put together. That's what I mean, I'm saying. I, uh, you got to put a band. You don't know what you're going to play. But you don't dude, know what's going to work. Studio, I had studio musicians playing yeah. for me. Yeah. You know, all these, I mean, really now yeah. famous people right. in our industry, at least, that have played on all these hit. It was just, uh, it's just funny to look back on it now when you mentioned jo uh, Joe Galante. Oh, <clears throat> Joe Galante, and, yeah. uh, and that was probably 20 19, 20 years ago it was crazy. But uh, yeah. um, I, the other one that surprised me, though, it, Joe, is he, he deserves to be in. I, I have no ill will toward him at all. Or It happened when it was supposed to happen. Uh, and I, if I were him, I would not have signed me either at the time because I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Right. Um, and so <clears throat> I would have been way in over my head. But um, – I was surprised that Keith Whitley was not already in the Hall of Fame like yeah, a long time ago. Well, Jerry Lee Lewis? Were you? Yeah. Unless but at least Jerry Lee, I mean, wasn't predominantly country. So I can I can at least understand that. Yeah. To a, to a degree. Yeah, kind of. You know of. what I, I mean? He might, have, he might have already been in for something <clears throat> else in there because they had something underneath that he might be in some but other But Keith, of, I was yeah, stunned I by. Thought. But there's a lot that will surprise you, you know, that, that haven't been. Well, I mean, the Judd's. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, that they just and Hank two years ago. I mean, stuff like that. Yeah, know, that, we know why that was. But, yeah, uh, you know, exactly. it's funny talking about that. That's one of the um, the first showcases. It's similar thing with Wayne with Wayne Mills when we were in town. We did a showcase about the same era. It must have been oh three four for Joe and Renee and a couple other labels. And it, we did it at the Exit Inn. And I remember the manager at the time wanted to bring in an extra player that we had we normally hadn't taken on the road, which right. we didn't want to. But they talked Wayne into like a, I don't know, a a, a steel player or some. An extra they make him dress different too. Uh, tried to a little bit. Oh yeah, I had to go. I had to go get this like. I looked like a fake ass George Strait. Is yeah. what it looked like. I'm like, I didn't what really we've been doing? Like yeah, I, I, and then yeah. at this point, Wayne had been making a good living out of the road. I'm like, what do we do? We've been doing. It's been building fans all over right. the South for ten years now, or eight years now. Uh, but a manager, the one that's paying for all this, you know, influence oh, yeah. and this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. And we thought the same thing because it was great. Had a great set. Sounded good. We had some good. Had new songs. It was going. You know, good already crowd. Had, already had the. Yeah. We were sober <laughs> there all the time and all the stuff. The bad right, things we normally right. didn't do. Yeah. We actually yeah, did yeah. those well this time. Yeah, the play-in yeah. was never the problem. Uh, but uh, 
And uh, yeah, it was, afterwards, the play, we, we, it was the play-in play. Yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. It, was it all, wasn't the playing on stage, right? So, yeah. so we think same thing. It's done. It's gonna happen. We go to Broadway Brew House, Midtown, Woo! throw down, party, oh, yeah. throw down, celebrate. Bushwackers, Irish car bombs, <laughs> party time. You know, this is happening. This uh, is gonna happen. And then yeah, a week later, I remember it was a rainy day. Got to go. Yeah, they they passed. I'm like, oh man, really? He, he, <laughs> you didn't just, see that you coming? Get, you get your hopes so high, and you start you start. I mean, literally, you start thinking of like, oh my gosh, tour buses, arenas, sold out shows, I'm hit like, songs yeah. on the radio, and yeah. then they, they literally—it's just like sticking a pin in a balloon. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. so we got to load oh, the van back up and go down all to that, Alabama. <laughs> all that shit we just did, and all those yeah. good vibes are just—and we—that yeah. means we can't go back to them for another couple of years, right? Because they just told us no. Yep. So yep. we, you know, now we got to go get told no by everybody else before and if, we and come back. It depends on who all you bring yeah. too, because you <laughs> yeah. know you have multiple labels and agents yeah. and every, more than just those yeah. people watching. It's whoever's yeah. there. So yeah, and you're thinking, well, maybe something. Else. You know, you just never know. But it's timing and stuff. And it is. There, just, there could have been other shots, and I know that's how I linked up with Party because Southern Holler, the band that I was running at the time, which was Terry and Lee and Howie and our bunch. Um, they hooked up with John and played his first showcase, which I think he got passed on in the <laughs> second one. Is when he got his thing, and that's when I came on with him. But it, that's our band was his showcase band because he didn't have a band either. Same thing, right? Right. It's weird. Yeah, how it's, that it's works. wild, man. Like I, I remember that. Just some old stories like that that uh, you know we think are boring now because we've told them a hundred times. Uh, but fans are like, "Oh, I love that," or "I love, I love hearing that." Like the other one was that always comes to mind in that era. I got offered a record deal by <clears throat> it was called Midas Records. I don't know if you remember Midas. Um, it was uh, golly, I forget the uh, oh Keith Falsey. It was a successful songwriter, and him and another uh, group of, of, of people. We were they were powerful in the industry. It started Midas. They had Emerson Drive um, when they had. Uh, that moments song, yeah. which was a big song, probably in 05 or something like that. Right. Um, and uh, they offered me a deal, but said, you don't have any songs. You, you need to change your producer. And so I, I just turned the deal down. I said, well, I, I feel like I have the, the album done and I definitely know that I have my producer. And it was another year or so before I got a record deal, um, but it it was that exact album, <laughs> that Same exact one. producer. Yeah. The, uh, and I think we had three top ten songs, a number one off that, and it's a platinum album. Right. With that producer, so it, it's just weird how stuff works out. But it, that yeah. just reminded me of that. I, I I haven't thought about that in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it really is all that stuff. Those memories we started everybody, talking about wanting it. Yeah, and every artist has these have these stories. I mean, like, it's not just us. I mean, it's a everybody's got that. You know, this one said no, and that one said no, and all the you know. Yeah, um, yeah, that's wild. Uh, I I got this thing here, and I'm sure it's probably old news by now. But this was uh, last week or so. Did you see the Arkansas, the water tower in Arkansas with Johnny Cash on it? Yes. We might know what we're talking about. There's a. Do you know where it's at? How far is that? Kingsland, yeah, Arkansas? Yeah, that's where Johnny Cash is from, where he okay. uh, was born or grew up or something. Right. Yeah. So they got and a so he's on the, of him. Yeah, it's like a mural on the side of a water tower in that town of him. I mean, you can tell it's him. I think it's him with a guitar or what? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so, <laughs> so I, I was just impressed by the marksmanship. I mean, because that had to be from a long. I, I, right. Unless somebody climbed up there and just did it, but but then that's dangerous. I mean, that's. I a would long, think they did it with a rifle from a ways away. You'd have I to would shoot think. it with a deer rifle a long ways away. Yeah, because I mean, in a water yeah, so, tower's up there. Yeah. So what Jr. is uh, talking about for those, uh, probably only Arkansans have seen this, I guess, and you, but because um, it was news. <laughs> Out here, but it was new. Somebody I think it made national news. It was on. Did it? News. Okay. It was, it was somebody one of those funny thing. You know, somebody shot it like right in the uh, in the junk in his business, yeah, private parts. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It looks like he's. In it looks like he's taking a TT. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like he's taking so a TT. So it's spewing out of his 
where his penis would be. <laughs> right. I mean, it it just like quite frankly, it looks like he's so, urinating. It looks like the silhouette looks of like Johnny Cash's pe- urinating. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, and it went on and on and on for a while. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if they still got it fixed, but the there must be a lot of there. water in. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's the, a yeah, lot like of water said, in a water tire. I mean, tire. it had to be a, a, somebody who was a, a deer hunter that just had to set up and make that shot. Because I mean, it's. I mean, you had to. It, unless and, it was just and there were no other just, and there were no other leaks, so he must have got it on the first one. Unless it was just a look, I, mean, I don't know. It just random, random, like he was just shooting the water tower. Yeah, because I wouldn't think you'd just walk up there and shoot it with a pistol or something. That'd be too dangerous. I mean, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not that's not. But dangerous yeah, crazy. Enough. If you guys can look it up, yeah. Uh, look that. Up. It's it's funny. I mean, yeah, it's Johnny just Cash so water tower. It's so hillbilly and redneck. It's it's so ridiculous. It's 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 pretty funny. Yeah. Next one I got here is from uh, "As Long as You Love Me," I believe is the name here. Um, uh, same person asked me. Uh, it was saying it was Randy Travis's birthday and asked me on Mount Rushmore on his songs a couple months ago. And boy, that was too tough to even come up with. But he said uh, they said. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a guy or gal. Uh, I'm watching a Kenny Rogers document documentary, and guess who pops up? Justin. It was when he performed Lucille. Would love to hear about his experience. Also, what's your favorite songs by Kenny? Um, yeah, and, I mean, it was a – go ahead. I was just going to say, and what they're talking about, for anybody listening, is there was a documentary that's out on TV now. Uh, I don't know which service you can get it on, but it was uh, – um, all in on the gambler, the Kenny Rogers farewell yeah. concert, and it was in Nashville at the Bridgestone, and Justin and some other country artists and our buddy Jamie was there. All kinds of people. That's the first time I met Winona, I think. Um, Lionel Richie, Dolly, star-studded cast there. But Justin got up and sang Lucille. Um, <clears throat> yeah. That. From what I remember about it, um, I mean, it was obviously a great honor to to be able to do that, and we've done that for him. Uh, Charlie Daniels, we did the same uh, type of event with, and seemed like there was maybe one more, but um, yeah, there's a couple. I'm, I may be forgetting, but um, no, what I remember, and Jr., you'll you'll remember this. Uh, I was freaking out before because there's a ton of words in that song. Yep, and I'm going, I'm not going to remember these words. So I'm, I just remember pacing around the bus. Um, before I went on stage to do that, uh, like just trying to study the the lyrics. I mean, I I knew the the rhythm of the song and the cadence of the song, but there's I didn't realize there was that many damn words, and so I just remember having to study and you having to calm me down. <laughs> like really, honestly, you like, dude, you're gonna kill it, whatever. What? Fortunately, one, I didn't need. Um, uh, I remembered the words, but two, um. They had a uh, 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 teleprompter uh, yep. for us to, if you did get stumped. So I'm like, yes, thank God. But thank uh, you. it ended up being really good and went well. And but it was a lot of fun. And just I, you know, I mean, Jr. You can speak to this too. But <clears throat> anytime you have the opportunity, and you know, the, what are the, what was there, ten or twelve artists? Maybe asked at to do least, that or something. At least, yeah. Uh, well, uh, but it was it wasn't like a it wasn't no, like no. you know everybody like, got a chance to do it. So yeah, it was when like you get 15, asked, probably fifteen you get, total performances. Yeah, yeah. When you get asked to be a part of those things, um, I don't know if it comes from the artist or the management or whatever, but it, it's it's a huge honor. It, it kind of swells you with pride to get to be a part of those kind of deals. You know, for for every award show, they don't put me on. Um, a lot of those people winning awards didn't get invited to be there with uh, Charlie Daniels or right. <laughs> Kenny Rogers, and that's not a knock against them. I'm just saying those are those kind of things mean a lot to me. So it was right. it was pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, that was that was awesome. I'm trying to think who I was there because it was a uh, Jamie Johnson one. was there, I think. Yeah, and or it was that the like Charlie one? Both, because remember the the. The one for Kenny, he was playing in the band. Don Waz was the band leader, and you he asked you, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you said, you said oh, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. play a guitar in this band now? You said, yep, yeah, pretty good, pretty good pay if you can find the work or pretty something. Pretty good like, gig, yeah. pretty good gig. <laughs> pretty yeah, good I said, gig. you just you just in the backup band now, Jamie? He goes, yeah, that's pretty good gig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. Well, Low pressure, <laughs> playing with a bunch I'm of like, all right, whatever. Yeah. 
yeah. and it was that it was one of those i mean dolly obviously lionel richie dolly, I mean, yeah a, and i remember yeah. I'm, that's where i met winona because remember we were we were walking through yeah. the backstage here and she was standing there just talking to somebody and i said to hell with it here's my shot i never yeah. met winona hey, and i've always had a crush i gotta go try to say hello get a hug so i just went up hey how you doing good to see you sugar hey, just act, yeah look good to see you sugar I act like i knew like, her say like, hey how you been <laughs> got my hug in. all right we gotta go good to see y'all see you later she was talking about right on boom got my hug in never met her but act like I knew her. that was uh, funny yeah i yeah, do remember story. that now it's, it seemed like there was a um there was a huge band on that show too, like the Eagles or something like that. Do you remember? You know what I'm talking about? Kinda. Somebody yeah, out of the blue. I would have to look it up, but we were like, "Holy cow!" Uh, now it was definitely some of the people because Don Henley was there. Maybe it was That's Henley what, or something. It was Henley was there, um, and maybe somebody else. Maybe like McCartney or somebody. I remember it was a big. Yeah, deal. there was some big. Yeah, there was some. Yeah, that was kind of my point. We were yeah. just sitting there. You and I went out and watched after I got done, and we just yeah. standing side stage, going, "Good lord, that's so and so, or that's so and so, or oh my gosh." Yeah, Allison Krauss was a part of it. Yeah. It was it was it was awesome. But I, I want to go. Yeah. I want to go see yeah. the documentary because that's been several years now, and I'd love to go back. <laughs> See yeah, I've seen our performance, but I haven't actually seen the the entire documentary. Yeah, um, uh, <clears throat> this is one I got from Christian Day. He said, "And I, uh, hey, Jr., I wanted to reach out to you and Jam. I know you're real close to your granddad. Mine has been like a best friend to me. Unfortunately, passed this week after a long fight uh, with melanoma and more complications thereafter." Being said, I've listened to Grandpa about 70 times this week. Wanted to see if you could share one of your favorite memories of your granddad, which I think you did earlier, which is awesome. It's your first memory. It's even cooler. Uh, yeah. Mine would have to be yeah. the night after a long hunt, and he and I would just go out, drink a beer, smoke a cigar, and check out the stars. He said, side story, he worked in the title business his whole life, and the reason he got into it was because he had a spot opened up in a mail room at his first company in Memphis. Come to find out, the man he replaced got fired because he was skipping work to go fishing. It was Bill Dance. Wow! How about that? Isn't that incredible? That's crazy. And then, wow. he, but I've got one here. Christian follows that up with, um, uh, "Hey man, had his uh, we had his funeral today, and just wanted to let JM know we played if heaven wasn't so far away during the service. I hope you know I'm not looking for any notoriety or anything. Just trying to get this on the podcast. Just wanted JM know to understand. And my best buddies, as my grandpa would say, it's weird not having them here. Love and miss them. And thank God we got to spend time we had." And that's that's kind of where I'm at too, Christian. I just think about the good times I had with Pedro and my other granddad, and they were great. Even my great granddad and grandmothers and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just they were you know grandparents are just different than parents. Oh, well, that's gonna be rough. But uh, um, you know your grandparents are kind of like your first little <clears throat> heroes because they're not ever getting on to you really or mine. What I know a lot of people like mine were and mine did too. But when you're little and stuff, well, there's ones that'll spoil you and just want to take you to do stuff and you know. I had one. I had one grandpa who would I mean, paul would <laughs> he would get on me if i yeah oh yeah if i needed it he would yeah what the hell you doing or what you know whatever right. i mean he loved me but he's not he wasn't the kind to of tell you much i mean i told you the story i mean he, he actually told me before he passed away and it was the first time i've ever heard him say that in my life right. i knew it but right um uh but then my other set they i just could do whatever right kind of like you with pedro yeah. and grand i i just ruled the roost when i came in i it was like my it literally was like my second home i mean right Same, it was yeah. it was like my house i mean i just went in grabbed stuff out of yeah. the fridge and did did whatever and I did. It wasn't necessarily the same with my other grandparents, even though I was close to them. It was just totally different. But they yeah. were a different generation. They were, they're about ten years older than my other right. grandparents. And so, like, like my my mom's parents never like they didn't come to ball games and stuff. And like my other set, my my dad's grandparents never, like, literally ever missed any ball game of mine ever right any sport <laughs> you know yeah. um and That's so kind of, mine was, sim was kind just, of similar it was to that kind of too. different you know yeah i mean and go stay at their house sides. talking about that oh too, I'd, I'd going stay in. At, and i live it was a little different for me because i live yeah. i don't know what two miles right. from my grandparents and 
I would be gone a week. My parents, yeah. they didn't even ask me to come back home. I don't think they really cared. But uh, And my grandparents, I could have just moved in with them. Yeah. And my other ones live on the same piece of property as as, uh, as I live now. I don't think I ever spent the night at their house one time ever right. in my life. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it, it, we had great relationships both right. with both. It was just totally different. Yeah, you know? yeah, I can remember staying at Grand Them's. If we didn't have ball or something like that, we might stay in the summer for a month, get dropped off or picked up, whatever, and then just go over there and stay for a month. Um, yeah. But, yeah, just different. Uh, got this one. Um, this is from Jody Allen, uh, A-L-L-Y-N. Uh, huge fan of the podcast. Just never get – finish with Kate's chicken coop no on purpose i did we not. talked about that we recently. have friends with chickens that give us fresh eggs so yep for, hey, for and very they also, cheap jody also asked about <laughs> will straight out of the country be released on cd and i know we talked about that at one point about cds and stuff and i end up getting a lot of uh a lot of people sending stuff in with cds so apparently there are people who still send C- the buy cds and st- stuff uh this person, Justin Key, says, listen to this week's podcast, and I got a fun fact. One, Walmart still sells portable CD players. I saw this past Monday. And two, Toyota still put CD players in their cars in the 2019-year model. That was the last year they put them in there. Yeah. So, I, I, some. I don't right, know here's somebody, And then somebody sent see, me this picture. I, it, it was just specific to – I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, no, I – I, and maybe I answered that incorrectly. I I, I don't I don't know, but I, I I just know that they're pretty much obsolete at this right. point. And and it, and whoever asked, it was specific to straight out of the country, which is uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that two albums ago, or was this the most recent straight out of the country? I straight can't even the, keep up. Yeah, straight out of the country is the one. Okay, and so I I don't know. I thought. <clears throat> Late necks and long necks was before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it seems like with one of those albums, maybe both, we did a uh, a, a, a promotion thing with Walmart. But I thought it was an out. I thought it was that was a the greatest final hits album deal. Okay. That was the greatest hits. So yeah, the, I don't the know. Out of the I, I really was don't know a, the answer to that question. But I I would think you would have a very difficult time finding a CD. Yeah, for now. I think I feel like all that stuff will go into production at some point. Um, well, but, I think it'll be down the road, though. I mean, you yeah. got to think they they just they just completely went away. What five years ago or something like that? Right. I mean, so it'll be you know vinyl didn't come back for thirty plus years or whatever, right? Uh, or you know, and so. You, but I, you, you know, very well just, may see a resurgence. But and that's and that's just I don't the know. one. And can you still? And can you still, like, if you have it on your computer, can you still burn a CD? I don't know. Not I mean, unless I, it's the other way around. Not, I don't think so. But, you know, that was the only album you did that for, that they did the digital release only on all that. So some probably will, and the next one maybe because that's like someone sent me a picture here. Uh, Mike Frederick sent me a picture, <clears throat> and it's a bunch of recent albums, <laughs> um, you know, it's Priscilla oh, Block, and Rainey, albums. and oh, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm um, wrong. I don't know. Some different ones from the last few years, but it just depends. It's, a lot of it's like that album thing. If it's a if it's something in conjunction with a some kind of release or exclusive, um, so who knows? The next <laughs> one we'll see. Um, well, and and I don't know. To be quite honest with you, I don't know the the business behind it. Yeah, you know, either. as far as like what it costs the record label to do versus what they get. But I don't, I have no idea. I mean, that's right. not my world, obviously, but um, so that could have something to do with it as well. Yeah. Next one I got here is Brett uh, Vandiver, Vandiver, <clears throat> uh, Cherokee Coyote 82 says, um, should send this to JM. I saw Brantley five years ago, to Little Rock, and he did the Woo Pig Suey. It showed up on my time hop today, and he sent me a video of Brantley calling the hogs. Yeah, so I think he mentioned that. me in it or something. Yeah, we'll have to call it. We'll have to um, keep that as memory bank. He's a uh, lot sweeter guy than I am. I, I would never uh, do the yeah Georgia bar, called. whatever don't the Georgia what is. bark is. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I would. 
Uh, yeah. This is Miles Miller says, was just listening to you and JM talk about Retro Bowl. <laughs> retro bowl. That's the game we play on our phones. <laughs> Buy the full version. Worth every penny. You can customize the team names, even switch them to college teams. I've been the head coach for Arkansas for 11 seasons. You and JM will not be disappointed. Check mark. <laughs> That's awesome. Working hey, on that. Speaking of, speaking of games, uh, Kate, uh, I wasn't as forthcoming with Kate as I was you about uh, going back to uh, Boom Beach. Boom Beach. Oh, and she's she like, like it. Well, she's like, are you playing Boom Beach again? She saw me during an attack. And I was like, yes. And she looked at me like, we need to have a talk. Like, you have an issue. Like, <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm on pills or something. I right. got, it was just a game on my phone, you know. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. Uh, I said, Sam- look. So I, I said we got to find that and and t- tell it to people. So this, there's this game that Jr. started, I don't know, a decade ago or something. I, I think we've talked about it on here at some point about how ridiculous and, it is about the review. And and I quit. And I yeah. thought I, I'm spending way too much time on here uh, defending uh, my island and all all these different things and and trying to. Uh, collect all these resources. <laughs> keep your resources. Keep so, people happy. It's it's so. Um, I don't know. I was bored. I only had the one game on my phone, the, the football game, Retro Bowl, and I I'm like, so I I downloaded it again, uh, the app, thinking I was going to start completely over. So you amass all. I don't know. How do you explain it? I don't even know how to explain it to people. Oh, my god! Because I know they're thinking, what the hell are they talking about it's right now? It's just a game that you got to build resources and build your bases and your attacks. And, I mean, it's a it's like a civilization type. I don't yeah. know what you call it, but it's a – it takes But it's a military thing. Yeah. Like, it's it's a big You got to defend your uh, island anyway. against attacks, and you got to attack other people's islands to get resources <laughs> and stuff. But it's very addictive and it's very ridiculous. Yeah, and then you got it. It's and so, so you, ridiculous. So you, so you called it back up and it had all your old stats. So you're right there where you so, left yeah, off. Yeah, so yeah. Like, so, so what was it? I don't know. Three, three years ago or something. I, I quit. I'm like, Probably. this is ridiculous. I, I'm an adult. I need to behave yeah. like one. Well, I was bored on the bus, and I'm like, I see you over there attacking with your phone sideways, and I'm like. Boy, it sure would be nice to get an attack in right now. <laughs> and uh, so I'm thinking I got to start completely from scratch. And I thought, well, I'll do it slowly and, you know, whatever. Well, come to find out, I'm still like a a lieutenant or something. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I, I didn't know that it would recall all this stuff. And then there's all these, <clears> new, <throat> these, all new, these new mini games and side stuff and upgrades you can do. Yeah. You're just blown away. Yeah. Yeah, and so anyway, she caught me doing an attack, and I was like, yeah. And so I told you, but the funny thing is on the bus, I, I said, I don't know if uh, you're going to be happy about this or if you're going to be disappointed in me, but I got something I need to talk to you about. <laughs> I, said, uh, I said, and you, you could not have been happier for me. And now we're, uh, now we're um, on the task force. We're on a task force together. <laughs> so we sound like seven-year-olds. Oh, oh my gosh! Man. Anyway, I, I don't know what prompted that, but uh, hey, and I just then next thing I got to get that. you hooked on is you got to go to the band bus and play that golf game they got on the mm. Xbox. Whatever it, I played a oh, game. Oh, Tiger it, Woods, right? yeah. Uh, it's the new version of that. It's the PGA <laughs> golf game. I need to but, bring uh, my. Um, I played one my, round with them on the way home, and it's pretty fun. Yeah, I, well, I, you you and I talked about it. I need to bring. I've got the. Uh, uh, Nintendo and Super Nintendo, the newer yeah. versions. I actually have. We actually have Kate's old, real Nintendo, the one, the games you got to blow in, the whole bit. Oh, yeah. I got mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And all that stuff. And so, I'll bring that. I've got my PlayStation. We could take it back to 1995 in a, in a hurry. That's so funny. Um, Yeah, we got to do that. Next one I got here is Sam Bell. He said, headed to the lake, jamming the Raised on Red. Now, that is country music, buddy. You tell JM they knocked it out of the park. Keep on rocking, brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. That's Sam. all Heath, man. That ain't me. Um, let's see here. Next one I got is this is from Ryan Pedro. Says Jay, I'm pumped that Justin is coming back to Dewey. My girlfriend and I called an audible on our vacation. Once we heard he was coming back, we we're looking forward to another great show at Bottle and Cork. We have tickets for the Friday show. I do have 
questions. Did Justin end up buying a beach house here? No, has not. No, no. I uh, figure one was enough. Yeah, we can't. But I do it love it there. Flow. It was, um, it was awesome. Um, I was talking to somebody um, about that that particular uh, venue, I guess, in that town last week. Um, it, it, it's a lot smaller venue than we're accustomed to playing. I don't know if it's 500 people, 600 people, whatever it is. But we'll play there back-to-back nights. Um, uh, I guess it's a Friday and a Saturday. Um, but, um, man, what a cool town. Yeah. And, Neat little and, party uh, town out in Delaware on the coast over there. Yeah, it was, it was, it was beautiful. It was, the crowds were great. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to going back. Yeah, I think they're only open a couple of months out of the year. They have like the summer think that's season the, kind of thing. I think that's the first weekend in July, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe the first and second or something. Next question is, does he have a favorite song or artist that he covers? Mm. Boy, that's Just tough. Depends. I mean, favorite. Yeah, I mean, if it's country, Hank probably Skinner. Hank Jr. Um, if it's Southern Rock, probably Skinner. Um, I don't really do anything necessarily. That's the Eagles would do like way the, different. Know, Rocky we'll do Mountain some Eagles way or stuff. something. Yeah, Joe Walsh. We do Joe Rocky Walsh. Mountain Way. Um, one of them, I guess, it's not really obscure, but I guess it could be to some people. Is uh, we did the weight the band. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, take a load off and, and then you'll do Ricky Skaggs sometimes or David do, Lee yeah, Murphy. Yeah, do some Skaggs. Or, yeah. Or just do some of those. Um, what's your golf handicap? Oh, right now, um, right now, probably about an 18. I haven't played much lately. Uh, the best it ever was, was I was about a 12, a 10 or a 12, something like that. I would shoot, I would shoot between 82 and 86 every time I went. So I guess it'd be a 12. Um, but now I can shoot an 82 or a 102. You just never know, depending right. on the day. Well, there you go, Ryan. Appreciate the question. Next one I got here. Um, uh, this is from Kato <laughs> Schlauberg. I know I'm not pronouncing that right, Kato. I apologize, buddy. Uh, hey, tried to send a message on JM Instagram, but nothing. So one more try because I would love to see you over in Norway and Europe. Can you also talk a bit about if that's a big deal or not? Hey, loving the pod all the way from Norway. Question for the pod. Have you or do you ever take tour in Europe? I'm a big fan. Fun, fast ones. The fun and fast ones in country music. But when Grandpa comes on, tears. Please come over and play. All the best from C. Um, and we've talked about that a few times. That we, That's definitely in the plans at some point is to go play abroad. Um, and Norway uh, and Europe, yeah. that all sounds fun. So yeah, and to be quite honest with you, we, we've we have discussed that on here uh, uh, to some degree, and and we had something really cool planned for for last year, quite honestly, and and without going into uh, a ton of detail, uh, it just it just unfortunately didn't work out. Um, so that that is something we would love to do. Mm -hmm. We just it just seems like every time we we get into the the planning of it or some something uh something happens and and blows it up somehow yeah. um so but i would love to i would love to travel over that you know abroad and and do do that stuff because i know there's a ton of country music fans over there plus just selfishly i would love to visit some some places mm -hmm. that i haven't um you know like my manager for example right now has sent me some videos and pictures he's in italy uh right now and i'm just like ah i'm so envious um mm -hmm. but so thanks for shouting out Cato, and thanks for listening um in norway we appreciate you and uh yeah, hopefully sure. sooner than later stay in touch <sighs> for sure buddy appreciate you um this one's from mark lowry lowry 92 What's up, buddy? Love the podcast. I'm a huge fan. I have a question for the podcast. How do you and JM feel about country rap slash hip hop? Keep up the good work on the show. We'll I mean, it's not first. my. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not my thing. Uh, you know, and I have great friends that do it. I mean, 
it's not, you know, I prefer Waylon Jennings, but um, I prefer Waylon Jennings over my music too. So yeah. that's not a knock. Uh, it's just not my go-to thing that I listen to, but yeah. I yeah. mean, it is what it is, whatever. Yeah. I don't if it's good, really it's good. That's why I look mm-hmm. at it. If it sounds good and it hits and it's it's right and it works, it's good. Because I, I say it like I say about like, you know, I always say music's a soundtrack to my life and my day. You know, I don't listen to a lot of heavy music in general. I don't listen to a lot of heavy, just don't. I just listen to more chill stuff. I'm getting older, tired, trying to relax. But uh, if there's a time yeah. moment, like I, there, there, there was a stretch there on the bus mm-hmm. where um, we would – Part of the warm up routine was riding through the country. John Michael Montgomery and Colt. Oh Ford. yeah, Colt. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I love some Colt Ford. And he so I guess much invented that genre. I, in my opinion, honestly. yeah. And 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 his and, and his records all sound good. <laughs> it's cool, and yeah. it's not trying to be something it's not. He's telling, showing you what it is. It is what it is. So I, the ones that it's just BS. I would say it's BS. But if it's real and it works, it works. So I like some. I like some of it. But again, the the bottom. Like saying, yeah, the bottom. It's not necessarily my cup of tea but these people who go sell out stadiums i don't like some of that but obviously a lot of people like it so who am i to say it's just crap well, yeah but. like well like i'm not a uh, we always say this i mean for some of these uh, uh, who did i just see um oh gosh the kid from one direction whatever his name is um harry he styles. just sold out yes yes harry styles he just sold out pulled that uh, out of my Madison earth square garden uh, I have yeah. name somebody. He just sold out uh, Madison Square Garden like 10 nights in a row. And I'm like, well, I, you couldn't pay me enough to go see that show. Right. Yeah, but I'm not, not the thing. target audience. Right, exactly. Uh, for that. Exactly. You know, and so, but good is good. Good music yep. is good music. And as long as it's good and it's real and, and whoever's making it is authentic, I mean, I'm all good with it. You know what I yep. mean? I, I yep. you know, yeah, I, I just... I'm not necessarily the the right guy to ask because I'm somewhat closed minded with music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and I'll say that yeah, the, the way, stuff yeah. I've heard over the years, it's people do this and that. <laughs> I, I like I like a lot of it. I like Colt stuff for sure. I'm big Colt Ford fans. We both are human and musically. Uh, next one I got here is from Amy. Um, she just says, and this is the couple we saw several times <clears throat> on the last runs. Amy and her husband Greg. Um, Jenny show, I think Bloomsburg, PN September's thing, Kettering. From, tell Justin for us, we have traveled to see him ever since I saw him open for Paisley in 14 and will continue as true country. He is a true country music artist. So thanks, Amy and Greg. We saw, uh, got to see them in a couple of shows. They were right on the front row, man. They they made the effort and uh, got good seats and good spots for some good shows because of it. Um, this is one from a buddy of mine. Uh, I call him Tank, but his name's Ryan Marshall. He's one of Jamie's, he's one of my fraternity bros, but he's Jamie's age, but he's. Uh, he sent this in. He's a, no, actually, that's a, <clears throat> is that my yeah, that's Tank. I just think that's my other buddy. I didn't, you know, and I didn't put that together that he is a um, that he's a Packers fan as well. Um, hmm. I mean, a, a Packers fan. I thought this was. I got another buddy named Ryan. Ryan Pack fan, and this is Ryan fan eighteen. I, anyway, that's sorry guys. Uh, Ryan Ta- uh, Ryan Pack fan is my buddy. He and his uh, I met him. We call him Lieutenant Dan because he looks just like Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. <laughs> and we met him and his wife Summer, aka Peach, up in Wisconsin when I was with Party. And they they just wanted to party with us after the show at the little bar we were at. And we thought it was so funny because his, his now wife, mother of his children, it was a pretty girl, but she dipped. She always had a big chaw in. And we're like, man, only girls in wow. Wisconsin, I, did, I guess, have a big chaw in at the bar. Uh, that's, you know, that's not very common for a girl to have a big chaw. It's, you know, a normal, no. you know, play with makeup and all that stuff. But anyway, uh, this is my buddy Ryan, back to where I was going with it. This is my buddy Ryan, who's Jamie's fraternity brother, my fraternity brother. He says, question for JM, in honor of NFL draft week, which has been a few weeks ago, my Packers sit at 22 and 28. We need a receiver's help. Is Traylon Burke – Traylon Burke's the real deal. As always, love the show, and y'all piss excellence. <clears throat> Hashtag Justin Moore podcast. Thank you, Tank. And we yeah, talked I about mean, this I, a second, and he didn't end up going to the Packers. He ended up going to the Titans. No, but I mean, I, I'm obviously I'm biased, but um, he's he's arguably the best receiver to ever play at Arkansas, and maybe that's not a, even arguably, uh, um, and probably the the best all around player to play at Arkansas since uh, Darren McFadden, which is a, a, a that's saying a lot. Um, and so, um, I think he is. I think he'll have a good career. I think he's got a 
I think he's got a, and this is just me reading different stuff from from actually professionals uh, to answer your question. I know maybe you don't care now that he he got picked by the Titans, but you never know he could end up a Packer mm-hmm. um, one day. But um, I think um, I think he's got to fall in love with the weight room a little more. Um, and I don't mean that like he's lazy. I, I just I, I think maybe that's where he could. He could gain some more advantage, but he's six three, six four, two thirty, right? And runs like a four 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 five, um, and he plays faster on the field. If that if that makes any yeah. sense at all, I mean, I think of one play last year where we were at Alabama, um, and they throw they well. I just know because Alabama's. I mean, that's the best mm. secondary maybe outside of Georgia in the in the whole country. And um, y'all won, so don't feel right. too bad. But uh, they throw a back shoulder uh, pass to him, and he outruns like three DBs from Alabama, yeah. which that's the kind of tape that gets you selected in the first round. Right. kind right, of my right. point. And, and so, yeah, I think he's got the goods. He's got uh, – he, he's, a, he's a great kid. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's got huge – He's got a big, huge catch radius. If he, if it's anywhere close to him, he's gonna catch it. Right. And his hands are so big that they couldn't find gloves. Nike couldn't make gloves big enough for his hands, wow. which I guess is a pretty good attribute for a <laughs> a, a wide receiver. I mean, yeah. he's, he's one of those guys that you know catches them one handed and all crazy stuff right. like that. You know, but yeah, those uh, those yeah, athletes that I think do he'll that be kind good. of stuff are it's so impressive now. It's People just, just used to couldn't do that stuff they do now. They're yeah. throwing them in the machines and they're catching them. I'm just yeah. like, wow, it's uh, crazy. But well, uh, I hope but he yeah, gets he, healthy and gets in the yeah. gym and, and <sighs> lives out to his fullest yeah. potential. Because, uh, like you said, I, what I watch, yeah, he's. I mean, you see these guys come along, and if they look, if they're on <laughs> teams like SEC and big college programs, and they look better than the other guys on there you know yeah. they're good because those yeah. guys are that, good too yeah they're all good out You're there right. and if one of them looks different than the rest of them and he did for his entire yeah i guess three years here even as a true freshman they just look different i mean that's mm. usually a pretty good sign so right uh next one i got here is from old buddy brett beer mm. beer bauer awesome name uh he said this was after the trace when he said i enjoyed the podcast uh, from this week with Tracy Lawrence, that's awesome that they're going to be doing a wall mural of Daryl Worley, Tracy Lawrence, and Charlie Daniels in the town of Mount Juliet. He's my favorite singer of all time. I wish they would invite him to become an Opry member because he definitely deserves to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry family, in my opinion. I wish he would get invited in the near future. He's a very smart and articulate speaker, in my opinion. My favorite song of Tracy's is The Coast is Clear off the Coast is Clear album. Y'all keep up the good work. Hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Tracy's yeah, got so I mean, many I don't... good ones. I don't disagree with any of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, uh, just, uh, it's just so political. I mean, oh yeah, not, and it's and probably, not, it's probably with his touring stuff too. He 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 hits the roads hard, you know. So I mean, it's how many times yeah. you got to be in town. I'm sure, he, I'm sure that's, well, that's a, a, on the horizon that's a, for Tracy. That's the other part of it too. Is um, you know, I wouldn't know this if it weren't for being you know a part of the industry. But it's um, as far as the Opry goes, you have to be available multiple times a month and i mean quite quite honestly i could probably have been a member by now but it's more important to be here coaching my daughter on a tuesday night than making two or three opry appearances a month and right i mean i would love to become a member yeah. but it, it, there's a lot of requirements that you right. have to fulfill and, and there's no time know, commitments you stuff. have to f- fulfill and so yeah you know it's just to me, it's not a priority right now to do to choose that over, and I guess I say that to say this that that could be part of the thing with Tracy too. Maybe he's got you know other priorities right now. I don't know. I'm not I'm not speaking for him. I'm just you know. Yeah. Well, you know, and it and there's no timeline on that either because you see acts like the Oak Ridge Boys didn't go in till 15 years ago, or Charlie was getting mm-hmm. you know Charlie, Charlie yeah. got inducted by like somebody else that's way younger than him so it's just time and priorities and, and like you know stuff like that so that could be mm. something once your kids are grown we're doing this we're doing that we go play the opera yeah board, and, it, you know, things and like it's that. not and it's not a it's not even like um i mean your status i guess uh, it, it does matter i mean you you have to have some sustained success i think but 
but it's not like you got to have X amount of hits or because no, you see, more of a like you said, thing. which yeah, I mean, it, it's like, um, like you said, Charlie was probably inducted by somebody that was, was forty years younger than him with right. not even half the amount of success. Right. I don't know that. I, yeah. I'm just I'm trying to prove a point, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So that all that stuff probably in, and down the line from <clears throat> Justin and Tracy. Uh, hi, Jr. This is from Renee Harvey. I have a cute story to share with you and Justin. I have a keychain of Justin on my keys that I recently got damaged when the keys fell on the ground. My eight-year-old daughter, who is very creative, got good at drawing, wanted to help me by making a new keychain with Justin's picture on it. Here's a picture of the keychain with Justin on it, complete with the cowboy hat. What do you guys think? And this little kid drew a little keychain with a little Justin little cowboy hat. No. I know. That's, <laughs> that's a good one. It. She did. They did a good job, Renee. Um, let's see. Next one got here. I'm sure everybody saw the Ernest Tubb record shop. There's no more in Nashville. Is most of Nashville's becoming. Um <laughs> so stupid. This is one that was one we'd already answered. And then I got a video of Roger jogging around the venue in Knoxville a few weeks ago, which was the funniest thing I've got on here. Jaw um, dropping. This is from Tex Shots. Cool name. Good beard. Uh, hi, JR. I love the podcast with JM. I listen each week from. <clears throat> I, I'm going to mispronounce this. Um, Adelaide, A D E L A I D E, Australia. Adelaide, Australia. I know I'm messing that up. Tex. Uh, would love a shout out. I reckon Ashton Shepard would be a great duet partner for JM. Cheers, mate. Yeah, for sure. I, I love Ashton. We both yep. do. She's yeah, great. I, I'm sorry. I probably didn't pronounce that um, your town right. If, uh, I, but I will check into that if you want to send me something back. But thanks, Tex, um, for listening over there in Australia. Thanks for listening and spreading the word and supporting the podcast. Um, let's see here. I got uh, this is from Ryan Sifkin. Uh, question for the podcast. Can Justin tell the story of how this line came to be up there in Des Moines? They knew my songs line by line. I just stood there in the fake smoke. Another dream came true that night. We saw him with Church and Kip Moore in Vegas and Boise for that tour, of course, being binging the CDs so we could be sure to know the songs. That line was so powerful. Yeah, so when I was um, when I was writing for my second album, um, which was... I think that was Outlaws Like Me, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds right. Um, and um, we were just discussing, uh, me and the co-writers were discussing all the crazy stuff that I had been able to to do, um, you know, open for this hero and this hero and, and do all these really cool shows and TV and just neat experiences. Um. Uh, because of my first album and the success that that we had with it and um and so that's kind of where the idea for the song came from and then so we were just trying to put real stuff in the song you know like i all that stuff's real i mean i really open for skinner and hank and alan jackson and this and that and i, I just kind of made a flippant remark like yeah but i I'd still rather just go home you know and, yeah like home, because I lived in Nashville at the time. I'd rather go home and eat dinner with, uh, you know, my mom and dad or, or whatever the the case was. And when you said and, the fake smoke, um, that's because we uh, these yeah. shows we use hazers that make the smoke where the lights look pretty. So that's where that came from. Yeah, and so that particular line, um, I had played a an acoustic show uh, right around the time that Small Town USA was becoming a a, a hit song and i had i had played it uh, an acoustic show in des moines iowa and, and that was kind of fresh on my mind where it was one of the first times that that everybody sang along with it and so that's that was a real thing that's so we put it in that song and uh so i'm glad you i'm glad you dug it no doubt um next one i got here was from our old buddy pete taller um, he said, hey, Jared, do you know if you're playing the Indian Ranch this year? Um, which we don't have anything booked now. It was up in Massachusetts. Remember, we played out in the lake. It was a daytime show. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of yeah, rowdy. Yeah. It was fun. 
kind of got to go yeah, through the crowd to kind of get to the stage. It's kind of a kind of a yeah. throwback. Kind of remind yeah. me of those videos we watch of like Hank and George Jones and them playing those kind of shows back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly where you're talking about. Canal Jamie there. had just played there or yep. played there right after us or something. Yeah, played there right before yeah. us and didn't play in color when he played there. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Just, that was the one I had heard that story. But, yeah, would love to. Pete, and he, uh, Pete wants to know if he wants to try to get his band booked on the side stage. Yeah, Pete's got a band. I, I see he gets around and plays. So, he said, thank you, sir. Love the podcast. Look forward to see you all play soon. Yeah, Pete, we don't, but uh, I will mention that because we had a good time. We have to schedule it to where we don't yeah. have a late show the night before because I remember that, that 2 o'clock show was pretty rough on you the next day. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, my voice was shot. I, I remember that. We had, so, yeah, we had I'd played like to go somewhere. Back and redeem myself. I think we had played like. I want to say we might have played like the ballroom on the the, the ballroom over there on the uh, Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, somewhere where it's a late show and it's rowdy, and then we had to be up the yeah. next day and do yeah. like a two o'clock show. We partied, but uh, but that was a fun place, and right. uh, definitely would come back to the Indian Ranch. I know Jeff and the guys yeah. had some stuff with production. That was right not long after COVID had lifted. They didn't have a lot of staff, and they were kind of shorthanded. But, um, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, this is Matt Frank. Um, JR, huge fan of you and JM on the podcast. Been listening to JM since he came out, and I love his music. I worked for a security company for seven years, became director of ops the last four of that seven. Love hearing about all your stories from the road, as it reminds me of my time on the road as well. Worked with several acts, Garth, Miranda, Dirks, Keith, Foo Fighters. My favorite memory is being backstage with Sammy Kershaw and Aaron Tippin, thinking I was going to have to break them up, break up a fight between them <laughs> because of the comments Sammy was making about Aaron's skin tight shirt. Exclamation point. <laughs> anyway, love what you guys are doing. I love the podcast and out on the road. I currently work in a union That's job fun. as a driller, but if you guys ever need a security manager, hit me up. I'll come out of retirement. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Frank. That's so funny. Because you could that see is, Sammy. That is funny. Sammy in his white up polo in his white tennis shoes, giving Aaron Tippin crap about his skin tight muscle shirt with his uh camo pants or and his snake boots. But let me tell you what, if I was Aaron Tippin, I wouldn't give a damn because we saw him a year or so ago and that's so good he's still jacked and as a proud American. I mean, and just if that's what he wants and I will say that it is we it is a comment worth outfit he wears on stage, but hey, if, if you got do it, if you if you're Sammy same way, would you get them hits and you've been doing long as do whatever the hell you want? But it would be funny that it be, I could just see you know you one of your buddies or somebody yeah. y'all giving each other you still trying to wear that uh, something and then think, and then somebody being like didn't Sammy my have butt, on blah, like blah, blah, blah. N- white white stark white uh, new balance like Nikes or New tennis, Balance yeah tennis shoes and, tennis shoes you know white just white button up po- uh, button up long sleeve polo like Oxford yeah yeah. So, but I, that's a funny visual to think of Sammy yeah. and Aaron. Yeah, because we know were, those guys. So, yeah. yeah. They were out with us a little bit. That stuff yeah. does happen. And I've said, I actually was talking to a friend of mine that recently who's another wrestling fan of mine because in wrestling they have what they call shoot interviews. It's where the older guys tell stories about the other, about stuff from back in the glory days. And we'll, and they call oh, it yeah. shooting because it's not, it's just saying it straight up. It's you know, calling him out. If it's good, oh, he was a good guy. If it's not, they're like, no, nah, he was a sleaze bag. He did this and that and this. And I thought, man, that's not a good, bad idea. Not many people would want to do it, but uh, if you could get somebody to do it, I could be the host of a shoot country music interview. And I could blur that's them out, and, and you wouldn't know, and we could do the thing, like, you know, when they're doing investigating, you know, they blur their face out, change, change their, their voice. voice. And I could get people to shoot because stuff like that happens i mean crazy stuff goes oh, on yeah. in the behind the scenes of country music and i always tell people that that'll be in the book later because i can't tell all them stories yet because you know they nobody do the stuff around me and i would get in trouble but uh but that would be fun to do a shoot interview because imagine if you could get people from back in the day say tell me how so-and-so was really back when you're on tour with them in 85 or whatever and then be like because you you know we said we saw this video you like our best buddies like Hell no, that guy was a crook, or you know, he did this, or he was doing this, or you know, or I, I just think that That's would be funny. funny. But anyway, that would be rant. Um, this is from our old buddy uh, Chase Morse uh, down in Gretna, keeping it real on the job site. Uh, hey Jr., have you and Justin decided what y'all are going to do for the 100th episode of the podcast? Hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Which we have not, and we actually mention it. So, Codester, we need to figure yeah, out when exactly to. the hundredth episode is going to be, so we can plan something. 
good for that episode. Yeah, for it's sure. Crazy yeah. to think two years we're about to have knocked down a hundred episodes. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Pretty, the hits pretty keep awesome. coming. Um, this is a random one. This is Ryan Sifkin again. JR, while restocking the drinks and spit cups, JM could call attention and put light of the podcast. Free advertising for the show. Yeah, we mentioned something like that. And we're actually going to start, I mm -hmm. talked with merchandise, we're going to start selling the podcast t-shirts at uh, the live shows. So if you're out on the road yeah. and you've got every other piece of JM merch you can get, get you a podcast uh shirt too while you're at the show and uh, i'll say that too and we talked about this because somebody hit me up hey sorry if i bothered you because i know we kind of talked about backstage and side stage etiquette and this kind of stuff yeah but if it's before the show and nobody's playing and stuff and i'm walking around and you see me and you want to grab a pick or do something say hey whatever that's that's a good time to do it before the show after the show right between sets that kind of stuff like if jay and i are you know moving somewhere before the show we catch you in the hallway we could say what's up or go, you know things like that's a lot easier than while somebody's playing and it's loud and stuff so definitely i'm more accessible before the show because usually jay's getting ready and i'm figuring out where we got to go and stuff but if, yeah if you see me beforehand um and want to pick or uh sign something or whatever yeah just let me know for sure because that's a lot easier than side stage um this is Patrick King. I just wanted to say I love Justin Moore podcast. You two do amazing jobs and make makes my eight hour workday go fast. I hope you get Miss Lambert on the podcast and also Ashley McBride. I love Justin's music and still think he's so underrated. Underrated, even though he's a big country star in the industry, needs to be featured on more award shows, perform. But that would actually make CMT have actual country music. So thanks for the <laughs> shout out, there, Thank Patrick. You. I appreciate that. Yeah, we've talked about that a bunch. Beat that one down, but definitely thanks for the kind words. Got some good pictures there from the shows lately. Been going to front of house lately during the show, and, man, Derek's been lighting it up, man. It's been looking so cool with the new songs. Yeah, he's stuff. doing a great job. Mm-hmm. The new sure. all the Shout-out to all the crew. Jeff Oliver, our production manager, Zach McCoy, modern engineer, stage manager, Paul Hart, Justin's guitar tech and overall backline tech. Uh, Derek Williams, the lighting director, uh, Brett Carlson, helping him out with the lighting tech, and uh, newest member, a.k.a. String Bean, uh, Carter <laughs> Williams, uh, helping out Zach, um, taking Alyssa's spot in audio engineer help world. Um, oh, String I, I got you tickled when I said String Bean's got a toothache the other day. String Bean, I? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Yeah, I, I just wasn't I, I expecting it. So I, I didn't feel like, bad either because I, I had to get his date, his birthday for something. Him and Brett and uh, Jonathan, our new merchandise manager. I'm like, oh my god! I like, I was in college when you he kids was, were born. This is ridiculous. I think he was born in like 2000 or something. Yeah, 2001 or something. Yeah, yeah. I and, mean, that's um, just Jonathan insane. was in '98, like literally the week I graduated high school. I'm like, good lord, guys! It's crazy. But here we are. Um, already did that one. Let's see what else I got here. All right, if we want to, I've got a couple of sad things. We'll hold those to the very end. Um, we'll do those at the very end. Let's see what this one is here. This is from Trevor uh, Husted. Uh, four years ago, four years ago today, I got to meet Justin, and he, he sent a picture of his new vinyl greatest hits. I've seen a few people getting theirs in the mail still. So thanks, Trevor. Um, but we'll go to, like we've said, if uh, we're going to start trying to do this, um, oh, this is, uh, Zachary Briscoe shout out on the podcast. Oh, I already got you on that one. There's you another one, Zach. But, uh, when we're going to go through the YouTube and I'm going to go and I'm going to pull up, um, next time we're on the, uh, comments on the, um, ratings and where you can leave a comment where you rate the podcast on iTunes and that kind of stuff, which please we need everybody to keep doing that as much as possible and spread the word on the podcast because, uh, get new people on here all the time sending stuff saying they just found out the po about the podcast so we need to keep that going but this is from last week's episode of the Justin Moore podcast which was episode 13 of this season four with our main man Scott Stevens aka the gorilla man um, this is from the YouTube um, the YouTube uh, airing of that um, so I want to go through those questions and comments real quick while we while we're there uh, Caitlin Kovacs says always a good day when a new episode comes out uh, David Dickerson, saw y'all in West Virginia, loved it. Was my mom's first concert ever. Thank you. Um, 
James Burke says, this was definitely one of the most entertaining interviews yet. Very <laughs> funny, yet also deep. I loved it. See y'all in Kennewick tonight. JR, don't feel bad. It took me almost that long to f- finish college. I like quoting Tommy Boy. <laughs> um, lots of people go to college for seven years. Yeah, they're called doctors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a PhD in honky tonk, uh, you know, I guess. Um, Tomahawk Chop says, somebody needs to make a rally raccoon shirt for the hogs. Is that something y'all do, rally raccoons? Well, the, he's referring to um, this was a game it was two weeks ago, I think, uh, and we ended up getting beat in the game, so it was bad luck. But oh, the guy caught a raccoon in the like down the third baseline and just was oh, like wow. holding it up like in the crowd, like holding it by like the neck, you know? Yeah. Like, by the nap of and his neck. Was it a player or yeah, like a fan? A fan. And so he's trying to walk it out. And I think he finally ended up getting bit. I had to go oh get a rabies gosh. shot and stuff. But, but moving forward, they ended up losing that game. So I, I think that squashed that. But um, the girls game, I guess it was two days ago, to send them to the Super Regionals. They were playing against um, – Oregon and uh and so <laughs> they had a squirrel run out on, and we were like it was tied at nothing nothing or three three or something we hadn't done anything at the plate all day and um and uh, a squirrel ran onto the field and up on the backstop and all. so they they um after that event the they, they they scored like six seven runs that inning or something like that so so maybe we should go with the rally squirrel instead squirrel, of the rally yeah. rac- raccoon raccoon wasn't a <laughs> raccoon didn't raccoon, pan out no but kind of funny yeah um susan r says we appreciate all the great fan advice behind the scenes heads up are always helpful <laughs> also too much love in the pits can make the higher ups feel left out have a great week uh, Coffee Guy 95, went to a show in Knoxville, loved it. Hope I didn't cause any issues by getting a picture with you, JR. Love the podcast. Nope, not at all, Coffee. As long as it's not, you know, nobody's playing. Uh, Dora Woody says, God bless you, Justin and JR. Love listening to you guys. Justin, I played your song till my last day at my husband's funeral. It was our song. Love you, Justin Moore. Mm. Sorry to hear uh, Karen Warren that. says, love the podcast. Great to meet Scott Stevens. Planning a trip to the USA in 2023 once my grandson – is taking his GCSE exams, hoping to get a, to go to a Justin concert, going to a few country concerts in the Apollo in London this year. Very um, cool. Awesome, Karen. Well, yeah, hope come to a show when you get over this way. Let us know. Um, <clears throat> Daniel Apple says, hey, guys, great podcast as always. As always, are you guys aware of Kofi Anderson? He would be a great guest and maybe even an artist to collab with. You should check him out. Uh, what does it say here? And Chris Lee would also be an awesome guest. All the best from your biggest fan in Germany. Um, and just you remember Kofi? Um, he's done a, several shows with us over the years. Uh, yeah, we definitely know who Kofi is. He's a good dude. He's a real patriotic guy. Works his butt off. Last time I talked to him, he was going to be in some movies and stuff, Western stuff. He's just a go-getter. Um, yeah. I think his wife's in the biz, too. You'd know him. If, if you pulled a picture of him, you'd be like, oh, yeah. I'm not, we've known him for a long time. Um, a good, hard-working gotcha. guy. And yeah, I'd love to have Kofi on. Hadn't seen him in a couple of years. Um, but uh, but that's a good good call on that. And yeah, we talked to Chris Lee, Granger's tour manager, about coming on, and that's that's going to happen at some point. He's they're, they're just ridiculous. Um, in Germany, appreciate you, Daniel. Thanks for listening over there. Yeah, um, for sure. Ryan Penrose says, hoping the tour has a part two. Keep on a trucking, even though they're sticking it to us at the gas pumps. Um, QA option one, favorite country song of all time. Mine is Chasing That Neon Rainbow by AJ. Favorite mm. country song of all time. Boy. Man, that is so tough. Um, <sighs> Just depends I on go what back day and it is. forth. Uh, yeah. Um, probably Chiseled and Stone. Burn Guys. in Alabama. I'd have to just one off the top of my head. Um, Option two, Larry's Pizza sure isn't JM's favorite, but JR, JM, what's your go-to <laughs> drive-through option? Mine is Chick-fil-A. Um, That's hard to beat there, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. A drive-through, though, Taco Bell I ain't mean, a bad that, option I mean, either. 
or crystal. I mean, all of it's good if you go eat. I mean, all yeah, tastes all great. Good. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. but Chick Fil A is the t- top of the food. Chick Fil A is my favorite. Yeah, they got it going I mean, on. That's, uh, that's lastly, if you're ever in the St. Louis answer, area, but... promise me you will drop into Surefire Barbecue. My cousin opened up several locations. They sm- they smoke turkey, chalk chip cookies are to die for. Um, good to know. Nice. Sure, Sugar Fire Barbecue in the St. Louis area. I have checked that out. Um, Blake Gilbert says, "Take a shot every time you hear bro." We would be hammered if we took a shot every time <laughs> Scott Stevens says bro. <laughs> Or let's oh, go. Man. That's the new thing. Uh, there's a talking about funny stuff. We watched yeah. this movie last night called Senior it Year. It's where this girl was supposed to graduate high school in 02, and she fell and got part hurt. Part of it. I haven't seen. And it then she all. comes back in 2022, and she th- it's funny to think because you know, anyway, it's pretty funny. Um, That's Rebel Wilson, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Douglas Workman says, "Hey Justin, me and my wife drove down to Knoxville for your show, and returned home for hunting for that show. Both shows are great." The reason I'm commenting is because the hunting show, my wife was in the pit and you shook her hand. Thank you for making my wife a happy woman. She your number one fan, and we look forward to seeing you again in Kettering, Ohio on June fifteenth. And again, thank you, Justin. Awesome. Thank you guys yep. for coming. Glad you had yeah, a good we'll see time. you soon again, Douglas. Um uh, some of these things I don't know now. If I if I mess y'all up and you're not a bot, but some of the time these things come through in weird languages and I might get duped like I still listen to your music and video. I love country music singer, country music singer, vote for you. So if Regina's real, thank you. If not, find something better to do with your time. Um, Joanna Rozier, a longtime listener. Justin Moore, J.R. The Hand, a great show. God bless you, too. You're awesome, and I'm fan for life. Thank you, Joanna. And I'll say this one here, too, because I see somebody trying to direct message her on this thing underneath that. Y'all don't fall for these people trying to scam, and we've said it a million times, but Justin's not going to reach out to you and talk to you on any side thing. No, him and Kate's not getting divorced. No, we're not giving away. There's no sign up for this, and you get a free all trip for that. There's none of that stuff going on. It's only the two accounts. Justin has all of both his Instagram and Twitter are verified. Nothing's going to come from a side account. I'm not going to ask And Justin you don't even have it. Yeah. I don't do any of my social media. Yeah, me and so Cody if I'm talking to that. you, if I'm leaving my wife for you, it's not me. I, pro- I right. promise you. So y'all don't be y'all don't get duped. These there's a bunch of crooks out there just wanting to catch somebody in a lonely moment or a sad moment, try to take advantage of you. So just if you don't I mean, know, you just somebody, told me about one the other day. It's just so ridiculous. Yeah. Like so the if, story the, if you don't already is just over the top. Yeah, if you don't already like, know people I mean, on there, don't buddy up with new people. These are just crooks and scammers out there, and these people are across the world doing this stuff. It's not just, you know, so y'all be careful out there. We will never ask you for money or a Social Security number or a signature or any information unless it's us talking directly, and I'll give you my number, and you know, so anyway. So it's not us, so y'all please don't get duped. Um, Susan Walk says, I never knew that Matthew Mc. Conahay's mother was actually from Altoona, PA. I live about two hours from Altoona. Uh, yep. Uh, this one says, unlock your albums, thanks or no thanks. Don't know what that means. This is Regina again. I have respect for you and country music singer, music singer, vote for him. He good man, good country singer, music singer, vote for him. Um, uh, Reagan Miller says, um, isn't your tattoo on your right forearm your first daughter's birth date? It is, yep. That is correct. Uh, Brian yep. Smith says, let's go, Brandon, can't afford diesel. So that's this That's <laughs> yeah, this no week's kidding. That's this week's I saw, uh, I saw, comments uh, on YouTube. So y'all go to the YouTube dates. when this airs, and you can leave a comment there, and we're going to read it on the next episode. Kate sent me... Um, it's a picture of a picture of Trump at the at the gas pump. Said uh, with the quote, "I could sure go for some dollar forty nine gas and some mean tweets about right now." <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Talking about the gas prices. Oh my gosh! No kidding. Woo-hoo. Everything it's ridiculous out, out of there. Control. Um. Yeah. So we got a few things before we wrap up. We'll we'll just do the uh we'll do the ad reads here at the end or beginning wherever Cody wants to slap them in there between something. We didn't really take an official break today. We've just been rocking along for almost two hours now. But this week, this will come out on the twenty sixth. Hopefully, if we can get it uploaded in time. Uh, and then Friday, the twenty seventh, 
of May. We'll be in Augusta, Georgia. Still a few tickets for that if you want to come to the show. Uh, the 28th, we'll be down in Daytona, Florida, playing with Craig Morgan and Toby Keith, uh, at a big Freedom Festival. People have asked about that. Your showtime is going to be around 5.27 p.m. Um, on that Saturday. Don't ask me why. I'm sure it's for scheduling of speakers and uh, presentations. And Is that in different. conjunction with a race or no? No, it's a Freedom Fest. I just it's think big, Daytona. I'm yeah, it's gonna... on the racetrack. It's at the Daytona Speedway. It's a big thing, Freedom Fest. I think it's a big military type deal. I don't know all the specifics. Well, that's an early show, huh? Yeah, and, and then you play for an hour, and then it's a small changeover, and then Toby plays pretty early as well. Um, so I guess hmm. they're I think they're doing it to end him, shoot fireworks like a lot of the military shows I are. I got gotcha. you. Okay. You know, like when we play military bases and stuff, you'll remember usually we're ending and they're trying to shoot fireworks at a specific time and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that'll be uh, fun. This, I actually this is thought Memorial about bringing Day a couple of the kids. Yeah, so because this is Memorial Day weekend, so that's um, – that plays into there, too. And then uh, Sunday the 29th, we'll be in Pompano, Florida, um, playing at the amphitheater down there at Pompano. So y'all come check us out on that. Then we'll have a few days off before we head up to Hobart, Indiana, playing the Bricky Bowl on the 3rd of June, then up to Carrollton, Minnesota on the 10th, uh, West Fargo, North Dakota on the 11th of June, then out to Reno on the 15th, Norco, California on the 17th, and Fresno on the 18th. Um, so that's where we'll be over the next month or so. So y'all come see us at those shows. Uh, you can go to justinwarmusic.com. Do what, buddy? I said, and then we get a little bit of a break. Yeah, got a week off. Then we go to Dewey Beach. Then we got a week off, and then it's back to um, – yeah, then we've got the Kettering and the uh, some Ohio shows, and then uh, Tulsa, and Mary, Mayetta, Kansas, and then the Little Rock show, which uh, I know everybody's excited about that. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're going to be the next couple of weeks, so y'all come <laughs> check us out. Um just looking at that schedule, yeah, and it's because I've got it tagged in. They're not going to have Nathan with us this weekend. Shout out to my uh, illustrious uh, uh, assistant tour manager, Mr. Nathan Hauer. He's got to go out and do some shows with Bo Cephas this weekend, so we're going to miss him, but be safe and take care of the goat for us. Um, we'll see you when you get back next week. Um, and then, yeah, but like I said, you can go to justinmoremusic.com. You can check all this stuff out. Um, as I've mentioned a few times over the, the last couple of episodes, we are – um, Cody and I have been working on some stuff. We are going to have some meet and greet options up soon for some of these shows. Not not going to be this weekend. Um, hopefully, maybe by next week. Um, and then again, uh, we are going to be dropping some stuff on one of the new social platforms soon. And Cody and I are thinking uh, that probably going to drop some very cool uh, behind the scenes and um, teaser type stuff from some of the new album that nobody's heard yet. So um, so y'all be listening out for looking for that. Yeah, I'm but all that stuff. About will, it. Yeah, all that stuff will go through the JustinMoreMusic.com uh, website. Um, so don't get fooled by the imposters. All that stuff will circle through there. Um, and that's where you can find tour dates, all these dates I've mentioned by tickets. Um, you can find the music. You can get the merch, which we've, we've I know you just approved a new hat uh, for girls, uh, a new women's hat, and a couple other merchandise items. You can find all that stuff on yeah. Justin's website. Uh, and there's links to that if you're just on if you Instagram and Twitter and figure it out. Go to Instagram or Twitter and go to Justin Colmore. Make sure it's got the blue check mark. Uh, and there's links to it through there as well. Um, so y'all go check us out on all that stuff. Um, yeah, you know, and unfortunately, I guess we got to say, you know, today, actually, as this happens, it was um, yesterday. I want to say shout out um, and our thoughts and prayers for all those families down in Texas from this tragedy that's happened again um, in a school of all places by a coward. Um, you know, it's just it's just tragic. Uh, you know, I just it's got to come to an end. And, um, you know, I, I just don't know. It's a societal thing, man. It's just bad. People just. I, I don't get it. I don't. I, I can't. I can't understand. I just can't understand. I I don't know the answer um, to that never happening again. But we gotta we gotta figure it out. Um, yeah. Just reading reading up on that uh, yesterday, I guess, or two days ago. Um, it just makes me sick to my stomach, man. When you read. Uh, you know, one one is too many, but twenty plus second, third, and fourth graders that just went to school one day. I mean, I have, you know, I have a a second grader and a fourth grader. It's just, I mean, it turns my stomach. It just makes me want to throw up. I mean, I, I just, it's beyond sad 
certainly our thoughts and prayers go out to the families. Not that that does anything for them. I mean, the prayers do, in my opinion. But, um, man, it's really sickening. I, I just, uh, it's, it's just, it's something we as a society, as parents, and specifically children, should not have to deal with going to school. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, I, I just, I can't, I can't, I can't fathom it. I, I can't wrap my brain around getting that phone call as a parent. I just, yeah. I, I can't imagine. I, and hope to God I never have to. I mean, that's just, it's, you know, I, it makes you want to go, well, do I need to go sit up there and play security guard every day? Or do I need to homeschool my kids? Or But, you know, then they miss out on so many things like making friends and it's just i don't know again i don't know what the answer is um i, I don't know but I, I i sure hope we could we could come up with one yeah it's just like you said it's just unimaginable almost it almost seems unreal because you're like no why how what <laughs> well why you know and i and can it's understand like, I'm not okay. Uh, clearly, I mean, it's 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 never justified to take the life of someone else, unless somebody's breaking into your home and threatening your life or whatever, um, or the life of your family or whatever. Uh, but why little innocent little kids? I, that that I don't. That is just a different kind of evil. I, I mean, you know. I, I said so that's what I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I mean, can't, I can't. No, I, 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 you know, a young person do. I mean, what? I, I yeah. I just. And then I can't, they turn around and turn turn around and kill themselves. So you feel like justice is never really served. No. Yeah. Just everybody be uh -huh. on the lookout there, man. If you see somebody going through something or um, feel something's not right, let somebody know. You know, everybody. You know, just be be vigilant and. Try to be careful. It's a wild world we got out there. You know, I t we talk to law enforcement and first responders all the time in these different cities, and they say, not similar to this, but just, you know, the stuff that goes on, the carjackings and the p young kids shooting each other and stuff in these towns, and it's not just, you know, inner city gangs and stuff. It's just random yeah, places well, now. It's, it's like it's, the awful shooting at the grocery store the, in the Buffalo week ago the week. It's just, in Buffalo. I mean, it's just awful. It's completely senseless. I mean, just going to get some milk and eggs and bread. Yeah. And it just, it just is. And, and you know, and, and you know me, I'm, I'm kind of always <sighs> leery of stuff. I tell you, that's half time. I don't want to go do stuff because it feels dangerous to me. And that's why I feel about a lot of stuff, just because I keep this stuff just yeah. keeps happening. I mean, it's just wild, man. You just don't know. Yeah, um, and you and you, you don't want to live your life in fear, but at the same time, <laughs> you do some. You know, <laughs> I mean. I mean yeah, so uh, again, prayers Crazy. to all those families yeah, and everyone sure. that's going through this. Just, uh, just terrible. Just absolutely terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, on another sad note, we lost uh, we lost one of the all-time greats down here um, on the coast. Uh, and for music and live music in particular, um, today got the news that <laughs> Joe Gilchrist, the uh, founder of the Floribama and the spirit leader of the Floribama, uh, passed away. Um, I could get into the specifics, but uh, had to be hospitalized and then didn't make it out of a, a coma. Mm. So um, he he was the one who started it. Yeah, he, oh, he wow. turned it in. He turned it in from. He bought it from the family in '64 and turned it in from a liquor store to a uh, um, a live Honky music tonk. venue. Was there? I mean, he's the guy. He's he was he's friends with all the legends, and he. I mean, he is the he's the guy. He was the Joe mm. Gilchrist. He's the guy. He and Pat long time owners of the floor Bama and Joe was the music guy. He did the, he's the one that started the Frank Brown songwriter festival. And that, he, Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, he was the ones, I mean, he was, I mean, he would put these people up at their house and stuff. Mickey Newberry came to town, was on tour. He put him up at his house and lived with him for a year. And I remember when I first start, would go stay on Joe's sailboat when we could, we didn't have anywhere to stay me and Jason Parker and there'd be, you know, Dean Dillon be there hanging out with him and uh, right. uh, Sonny Throckmorton and, I mean, just these Ken Lambert and uh, Jay Hawkins and these legends, but it was Joe, and Joe didn't play or sing. He was just a facilitator for all this stuff. He just made sure they had what they needed and 
started a listening room across the street when the bar got too rowdy so those people could still have somewhere to play. I mean, he was just a mm. uh, he was just a awesome human being, a very kind spirit, a teacher's heart. Uh, that was his profession. He was a, a, a high school teacher, ended up back in Pensacola. I believe he was a Navy brat. That's how he was in California teaching, ended up back in Pensacola, bought the floor of Bama, um, turned it into the, you know, the, the southern – mecca of beach watering holes it is and live music and um yeah he he, he passed today so wanna it's gonna be tough that's some big big shoes to fill because uh a lot of us think we we know but that why he did it and the reason it was there was bigger than just a few small reasons we think you need to have a bar and somewhere for people to play music it was he'll be he'll be missed we got a lot we got big shoes to fill everybody who had some of that joe in them we got to make sure it stays alive because um you know a lot of a lot of traditions and uh, cultural things and areas and stuff can get gone. They're being money, erased. Yeah, I mean, money comes in and it goes away, and then if the person's not there to tell the stories, eventually just gets gone. So mm -hmm. um, we got to make sure you say that for a long time. So prayers with the Gilchrist family and all for of our sure. Florida family family. Um, that's a tough one. And want to say uh, well wishes to someone we've talked about recently, a buddy you've met a few times over the years and we've done some shows with, uh, Stephen Tyler. Um, has checked himself back into rehab um, for some stuff. They had Aerosmith cancel on their tour, I just saw. So I uh, want to say uh, thoughts with that. him as well and their whole team. Hopefully they'll, you know, he'll bounce out of this as he has before and get uh, get the help he needs and get back out on the road. I didn't see, I didn't see that. Yeah, seriously, it was a day or two ago. Just saw that. Um, and I don't know, Justin, um, if you wanted to mention um, Bob. Well, for wrapping this thing up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, l statewide legend in, in country radio, radio period, um, Bob Robbins, who was um, at the flagship station in, in Little Rock and, quite honestly, the state of Arkansas for country music, Kissing 96, um, Passed away, and I really don't have any details. Uh, I haven't really dug into it. Um, but about a month ago, I mean, he's in the Radio Hall of Fame, and, the, I mean, he's, you know. We well, you know we first heard, not to cut you off, but you remember we first heard word at the straight show. Yeah, so I was going to, that's kind of where I was going with that. Somebody had told me recently in the past month or six weeks or whatever, hey, you might want to holler at Bob. He's not doing great it was the dj yeah, I, from that okay we i didn't night. i didn't realize that's who it was but yep. now i do remember that uh, and she, i knew she, that someone she, had and she was there at the golf tournament too that day i, 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 might, I can't remember her name yeah i knew that someone had told me that but yeah. um so anyway when i was growing up um well let me go back i i didn't realize it was as dire as it was so of course i did not make that phone call which i obviously regret now wish that I had um but when I was growing up I mean he was radio's different now um you know but back then it was all local and you know I'm sure you growing up where you did you had your guy or set of guys or whatever that introduced you to the new Hank Jr. song or the new Clint Black song or Tracy yep. Lawrence or whatever and, and he was our guy here you know in central Arkansas and so um you know to then uh, and he had a i think he had like a a 60 year career or something crazy wow. you know? so like but um you know then when i when i became uh an artist and 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 did this for a living um it had nothing to do with people at the station kissing uh, it was more so that it's a big, huge conglomerate. And, and quite honestly, they, they really didn't embrace me super early on in my career as the hometown guy and, and put all their full support into me because it wasn't local anymore, really. Right. The people weren't, you know, the people were great to me at the station, but Bob was always a champion for me and my music. He, um, I don't know if you know this, but he grew up or he, he lived in Grant County, which is where I live. Oh. Uh, a different a different town but um uh, he was always very good to me very supportive very kind and 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 you know if i needed words of encouragement or advice or whatever he was always there for me and and um you know we shared a ton of awesome moments together and 
sharing stories both on the air and off and um just just um just sad uh to, to lose him i mean you know he had a i think he was 78 so you know a, a pretty long full great life but it's net you know it's always too early yeah. you know and so you know thoughts and prayers obviously go out to his his family and he's going to be missed that's for sure I, i've done a couple of interviews over the last few days about him and you know his legend and i mean he he owned this this market for you know decades uh so uh so um, we'll we'll definitely miss him for sure but uh yeah i appreciate you bringing that up yeah, that, it's just it's like the, it's like talking about Joe's the same thing. It's like man, you just can't replace um, you can't replace people like that. Yeah, you know? and that was back in the day too when you know you could some out there listening will remember this, and some are probably too young to. But back then, and you know this, uh, but you could you could call in and talk to the DJ and say, hey, will you play that new? You know, whatever uh, George Strait song or you know whatever, yep. and like two or three songs later, hey, I'm gonna send this out to Justin, and yep. uh, he just called and wanted to hear the new George Strait song or whatever. And nowadays you can't do that, but um, but but you know, growing up then you could, and it was kind of neat, uh, especially now that as you talk about culture being erased and and different things going away, um, you know, that was part of what led me to fall in love with country music you know was was hearing him and on the radio every day yeah it's um you know especially if it's been somebody that long you know it's just like <laughs> man yeah yeah that's a bummer yeah my yeah. entire life so yeah, yeah. and, and then uh, i had a few more real quick ones here cool. we'll try to hit just to get them get them in so i don't lose them for next time this is uh, Ryan Blaker. Hey, JR, big fan of Justin and you. I work in law enforcement, and my wife is a registered nurse. We are hoping to go see your show in Kentucky August 26th for our anniversary. Keep up the good work, guys. Well, thank you very much. I hope you do get to come to the show, and, and thank you for what you do, uh, both of you. Um, this was Jeremy Whitfield sent me a picture of his old Justin Moore uh, hat. Yeah, and he asked if I can find some old merch stuff. Yeah, I'm a, I'll look and see if I can. Um, I know the new merch guys are doing a good job of getting the merch trailer lot stacked up. Uh, uh, this was funny from the, same, from the same guy. Jeremy says, uh, would love for you and JM to talk about the diamond cutter on the podcast and see if he got hurt from it, like he landed hard from it. I was talking about in Atlanta when, when Dallas Me? came out. Yeah, I did. Fox Theater. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Had to help you off um, stage. That was a really terrible. I like fell off the stage. I was back like in the stage. You were. I was like disoriented shoot. from the diamond yeah, cutter. Yeah, it was ridiculous, and I, it was a stupid idea for me to do that. I just didn't know how to take the bump, and uh, so basically, what happened is instead of I, I basically took it sitting down on my butt, which just jammed my spine. And so, yeah, I had some major back issues from that for a little while. And, and uh, if you'll remember, that's when I started doing the yoga. Yeah. Because I was going to go to the doctor, and Dally was like, no, just do this, and it'll fix it, I promise. And it did. Yep. So that's a that's a testament to, you know, the – DDPY, uh, no doubt. The DDPY, yeah. So anyway, yeah, it was not good. <laughs> it yeah. was not good. But, I, I always, you know, it was one of my childhood heroes, you know. I was like, hey – let's do it i i can i got to take the cutter from ddp i mean yeah, old know, stage at the fox and i, I mean. survived to tell about it so yeah the same stage where james <laughs> brown and elvis presley played i'm gonna yeah. take the cutter from ddp I yeah love it. and i took the cutter yeah it was awesome so i guarantee you that's the first time you've ever seen and will ever see that on a, a stage i, I yeah. guarantee you yeah that was good stuff uh this is from yeah. mark white says uh <clears throat> He actually, the same guy who asked me if I'd heard of Larry Fleet, which, yes, I have. And we're actually doing a show with Larry soon. I've played you some of his stuff. Larry's, yeah, he's Larry's good. Got good stuff. Talented guy. Um, Mark also says, all right, JR, got some foodie questions for you and JM for the podcast. What's your J, you and JM's favorite seafood? I grew up on the coast of Virginia on the Chesapeake Bay, and my favorite are fried oyster scallops and the crab cakes made with blue crab meat. Other part is 
what are your other what are your favorite things to put on a hamburger or a hot dog uh y'all are crushing on the podcast and i listen every week see you in july in danville virginia we already have our tickets man my favorite uh that's tough probably my favorite would be crab i'll say uh, shrimp if i had to choose yeah i'd have to um, just go with shrimp but i like it all i like a lot of it and on burgers, I'm not really a condiment guy. Um, I, I I don't do mayonnaise or mustard. I, I eat uh, like on a burger. I ideally, what I would put on it uh, is um, lettuce, tomato, pickles. Uh, I like American cheese on my burger. I know a lot of people like cheddar and different stuff. For some reason, a burger needs American cheese on it to me. Uh, and uh, grilled onions. Y'all like grilled onions, but they got to be soft, not yeah crunchy. I can but eat them that, crunchy. I don't be do way lettuce and tomato, go. but I'll do the condiments. You know, one if I had to just make a burger that I thought would taste good right this second, I do like a black and blue burger. I'd like a um, burger with blue cheese, bacon, Swiss, Swiss, some mustard, uh, grilled onions, and maybe a fried egg or something. All oh, that sounds great yeah. to me. Well, what was it the one time? And, and see, I think blue cheese is disgusting. What was it one time you brought back to uh, the buzz for me and I took a big bite of it and I'm like, what in the world is in that? I was mashed potatoes or something. I don't know. Oh, and recently you were the like, mashed potatoes that, that got that no, had the horseradish in them? No, no. This was a, a few years back. I don't know if you remember. It's like you went to a steakhouse and you got us a steak and a – I don't know. Whatever it was – I just took a big swig of it and thought, and I'm like, oh, you go, oh, yeah, there's blue cheese in there, and I wanted to puke. About like the time I took a drink of your tequila or yeah. margarita or whatever, and I wanted to vomit. Uh, but then a hot dog, I, I either eat it completely plain or I'll eat, uh, I like a chili cheese dog. Like, there's nothing better than a foot-long uh, coney from – from uh, Sonic, but I don't, Sonic, I don't do, yeah. I don't do uh, mustard. It's just literally chili and cheese. Yeah, a hot dog is different. I, and hamburger, I could put anything too. But a hot dog, yeah, I, I like one with just this, one with that, one with a bunch of stuff. I put chow chow on it, relish. Yeah, you know some of this. Yeah. But yeah, a good old chili with the sprinkled cheese on top. Yeah, that's yep. hard to beat with some, hard with to some beat. ketchup. Uh, this is from my buddy Ox uh, out in Texas. Uh, I got a basketball trivia fact that JM missed. UConn gals were 11 and 0 in national championship games until last week. 11 and 1 now. Didn't wow. lose four straight championships. Uh, thank you, gambling. They did lose four straight Final Four games, though. We missed okay. that. It was an eight yeah, I knew. I, I I knew that they. Uh, the only reason I knew that, uh, quite honestly, is because there was a girl um, from Little Rock who who. And I might have mentioned this, I don't know, but there was a girl from Little Rock that went and played at UConn, and I think she had gone to like maybe four Final Fours and not won any rings. Wow, which serves her right for going yep. to UConn for if you're from Little Rock. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, but kinda. Um, not at all. But no, I mean that's that would be brutal. I mean it's a gr it's incredible, but at the same time you're going, really? We went four times. And well, it was I like our Braves in the nineties. I mean, yeah. as good as the Braves were, we got won one. one. We, sh we yeah. should have got several. And who was it? Then well, it's like fo football. The Bills back in the day. Then they go to a couple Super Bowls. Oh Bowls. my gosh, the Bills! Yes, that? yes. Like the they, early nineties. It was maybe. four in a row with Jim Kelly. I think so. Yeah, they and, lost uh, to like it was Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas. And, and was Bruce Smith there? Maybe. Br yeah. I think, and uh, yeah, ter I mean, just awful. Uh, yeah, made I it mean, four times in a row and lost. Still, ain't, I don't think they've been back since to the to the uh, uh, Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that was uh, back in the day of uh, Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith. Because I was going to say, I think I they think, beat them some. I think, that's, I think they did. And then I think they might have beat them three times in a row, or something crazy. Something. I could be wrong. I, I could yeah. be wrong, but but yeah, that would have right. been brutal as a fan. Oh my gosh. Um, Vinny uh, asked, question, what will happen first? Justin makes a TikTok or Arkansas wins a national championship? Ha, 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 just joking. That's a good question, though. That is a good question, actually. I don't know. That's I mean, a good no question. No finals are going to decide in the next month. Uh, well, I, I, well, you would baseball. know. Baseball. I'm sure there's a – there's a Base, Baseball and softball. There's a both. freshman lacrosse team playing somewhere that you know who they're recruiting for yeah. right now. Well, baseball and softball. 
and we got a chance at both. We probably got a better chance at softball. They're, they're I saw some. This is more right of a your now. fact because you're more of the softball baseball guy. But I saw a fact today. It was something about Oklahoma's girls that they had outscored their opponents like 550 to 30 this year, they're, and they've they're, they've like they're hit run rule. Good. 10, 10 of them or something crazy. Yeah, they've. Uh, I think Jr. If I'm not mistaken, they've lost two games all season. They're like fifty and two or something, just ridiculous. Wow. And and they get to, you know, like they, their version of Omaha, which is where the College World Series in baseball is, is in Oklahoma City. So they kind of get a home field advantage in a sense. To plus they're incredibly talented and really really good and. Uh, they 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 are down one of their best pitchers right now, so that may open the door for somebody possibly to beat them. But they're they're insane. They lost to Texas once, and they lost to Oklahoma State in the Big Twelve tournament, and that's the only loss they've so had. So that, that's that's unheard of in baseball. It's baseball, crazy, softball. Man. Yeah, that's dominating right there. Yeah, and they've um, won. Jr. They've won like five out of the last ten World Series or something. Have they? Just. Like Alabama, right. like you know what I right. mean, like just right. crazy. Wow, yeah. Well, maybe we can get them this year. Y'all can. Uh, yeah. James Johnson uh, on Twitter says, "Jr. just had to pause the Justin Moore podcast to listen to Raised on Red, the new Kickass song by Justin and Heath Sanders. Um, it will make you want to run through a brick wall. Roll tide, <laughs> roll. Uh, Princess awesome. Woo Pig, definitely. Well, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, that's Rich, uh, everybody seems to be digging it. That's so. a rowdy one. I like it." Um, I like when Heath was out on the road with us and they played it too. They light it all up in red. It looked cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, Richard Edstrom says, uh, JRJM, listening to the this week's podcast and y'all talk about different set lists. I would travel almost anywhere to listen to Justin play the deep cuts he doesn't get to play often. I said that. We need to set up something one year, do like a 10-run theater tour or something, and you're going like all the off the songs. Yeah. No hits. No hits tour or yeah something. that would be it's just it's one of those deals where you know for for every one of those that you get there's yeah. you know a hundred other people going i really want to sing along to all right you know, to, right. i mean for me as an artist it would be a, a blast to go yeah. play stuff that we don't get to play often but at the same time i don't want stuff thrown at me for for not yeah. playing small town usa yeah. or like whatever, say, yeah, i you know, think if whatever. you fit it in a setting where people if knew, you build it, like it that it, way yeah because like robert earl Keane's thing he played a couple of his hits but he basically played all just stuff he wanted to play but it was right it was a theater with nothing but fan that did not were not trying to I mean, they he could have right. farted on the mic and they'd have thought it was just right. as good they were just there for the experience so yeah that's a good good uh good call though rich uh, Eric B. Johnson, 88, on Twitter says, C2C Festival, just listening to the Justin Moore podcast, heard Justin say he'd love to play in the U.K. I think it's up to you, C2C Festival, to make it happen next year. I think Justin <laughs> would make a great headliner, so please ask him to come. CC, yeah, be fun. JR the Handler. Yeah, that'd be cool, the country to country. I saw, saw some of our buddies going to do some of that recently. I don't remember who I just saw was heading over there. Um, I know my buddy Matt Patton from the Drive By Truckers has got missed his first flight for the Truckers European Tour, so hopefully he made his second one and gets over there to get that tour going. Um, <clears throat> Javier Baraga, uh, Baralaga, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at pronouncing names, y'all. I apologize. <laughs> You guys were talking about the George Strait set list on the podcast. I've seen Las, him in Las Vegas live. So I've seen him about 15 times. Now he hardly ever changes it, but maybe just a couple of songs here and there. But two songs that I love to hear him cover every time I go, hopefully he sang them for you guys, were Waylon Jennings' Way More Blues and Poncho and Lefty. Love the podcast from Javier in Las Vegas. He did play those. No. Oh, he did? He played Way More Blues. I don't remember that. And I'm thinking Poncho and Lefty been, also. It must have been be on awesome the bus or did. something. Um. Anyway. That was um, – yeah, I wonder how the Vegas residency things work on that stuff, if you're going to play the same place every night over and over. But I guess you have different turnover on crowds, so – and you don't want to not play the hits play for the them again. Thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I would think – yeah, especially because I think they do two shows a night, if I'm not mistaken. I might, I might be wrong about that, but it seems like some people do any anyway. Yeah. 
Well, that's about all I've got for that mm. stuff. So everybody use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Go on Instagram or Twitter. I'm JR the Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore on those platforms. You can go to justinmoremusic.com and find all the info we've talked about. You can go to jrthehandler.com and find links to all my stuff and links to this show and uh, link you back to JM if you can't find it that way. Um, but remember to use the, uh, the hashtag Justin Moore podcast, like, rate, subscribe, leave us a notif- uh, hit the notification button, uh, share it with your friends and family, anybody, you know, likes country music and hopefully they'll enjoy some of this podcast and some of our guests we've had on and looking forward to many more and many more fun guests. Um, and we're going to hit the road and hopefully get another one in next week for you guys out. Hopefully this one will get, uh, get, get uploaded and shipped in time for you guys to have it tomorrow, mor- tomorrow morning. Um, if so, and you still have time, please come see us this weekend. Augusta, Georgia on the 27th, Daytona on the 28th, and Pompano Beach, Florida on the 29th. Uh, then next week in Hobart, uh, then the 10th in Carlton, Minnesota, the 11th in West Fargo, North Dakota. So come see us if you're close. We appreciate y'all jumping on with us today, tuning in and tuning out. Uh, thanks for supporting live country music, and uh, we'll see y'all next <clears throat> week here on the Justin Moore Podcast. And Yeah, we're going to figure out what episode number 100 is. We'll talk about that soon and what we got planned for that because we got to be creeping up on it here soon. For sure. And y'all are one out away from closing us out for the third time in four straight games. Wow. Ridiculous. Roll At least we didn't give pick. up 18. It's only four, four to three. So. <laughs> but, y'all, go listen right, to George, y'all go listen to Justin on the Morning Mayhem if you're in the Arkansas area. You can find it on the Buzz app on your phone uh check them and his knucklehead buddies out every morning chopping it up fun stuff and uh come see us at the show we'll see you next week here on the justin moore podcast thanks for tuning in everybody thanks guys today's episode is sponsored by bobcat if you're like me you don't like to sit still for very long you look out the window and see possibilities what if i planted a row of trees over there it'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods that's why bobcat equipment is so great It's compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at Bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, You can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, and Instagram, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, but check us out. It's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer, shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon and authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So, 
if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 47, Death and Taxes. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Matthew twenty-two twenty-one. 21. If I look these United States of America over from coast to coast and border to border, I seriously doubt if I'd find too many people who love to pay taxes, or even less who agree with how our elected government spends them. But whenever, but whether we like it or not, taxes are a way of life. It is the price of living in a civilization and being able to turn on a tap for your water rather than having to go to a well or spring every time we get thirsty. It is the price for having law enforcement that keeps the jungle at bay. There is nothing wrong with using every loophole, legal dodge, write-off, or deduction we can to pay less taxes. That's the law. But when we go past the state, go past that stage, when we actually cheat, we are not getting back at the government, we are stealing. Period. There was a time in my young life when I was working a regular job in the daytime and playing in a band at night. I was paid in cash for my band job and didn't file the money, thinking the government wouldn't even notice. After all, I was paying taxes on my day job. Big mistake. I'm here to tell you that the IRS did notice. I had to pay pay back every cent I owed in addition to enduring regular visits by IRS agents, which is an intimidating experience. I have beaten my head against some very hard walls. Take what is yours, no more, no less, and live in peace. Let's all make the day count.